since you've been gone. By Rainbow, since we've been gone, Steve. What's been going on, mate? Well, so much has happened, doesn't it, in the world, um, you know, politics and stuff. There's been an election and the like. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, and our producer, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I say producer, <laughs> funny, yeah. uh, yeah. Carl Pilkington. Alright. Yeah, very good. We've been away for a while. I think uh, the last show we did was January 2004. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed whatsoever. Nothing's been mended. Uh, I, I, I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure I threw that away in the bin <laughs> yeah, before yeah. I went, before I left. Yeah, there are some of your uh, your old bacon rinds from that sandwich. <laughs> yeah, Still yeah. The spare ribs on the floor. Yeah. yeah, nothing's changed at all. Oh, I, oh no, that's not true. Um, uh, the listenership has changed. It went down slightly, didn't it, on the last Rage Hour? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Is that is that what happened? Did it go down slightly, Carl? <laughs> Uh, a little bit, I think. I don't think Exxon gets new listeners because I think what happens is, the reason it goes down just very slightly each time is that their old listeners die. Yeah. Uh, you know, Definitely. old Cure fans dying of... Yeah, you know, smack addictions. Yeah, gout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, well, I've never, I haven't listened to this, um, station for a year and a half, so it's, uh, that's increased by one, <laughs> yeah. which is uh, probably quite a high percentage. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, uh, I, well, I, I mean... I suppose that, that my question, I suppose, to you, Rick, would be, you know, why now? Why, why have you come back now? You know, you're- Bored, a bit bored of sitting at home, <laughs> right, you know. okay. Yeah. Because we're just here for six weeks. Six weeks. Um, well, we're standing in for Adam and Joe, aren't we? Yeah. Mm. Yeah? Oh, the tables have turned, I remember when they were standing in for us, but, uh, Yeah, I I'd, I'd, <laughs> don't know. But, I, I mean, the only reason I'm here is because, um, my, um, my housekeeper cleans, um, between one and three. Oh, right, that's um, a good idea. So I just want to get out of the house. And, uh, are they, are they listening to XFM? Well, no, she doesn't speak English. <laughs> you know, okay. I'm not made of money, Rick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I can help out, you know, a, a young immigrant lady, then, um, then I will do. And, and, and there are so many things I can do for her, in yeah. so many ways. Yeah. Um, but her, you know, picking up my old tea towels and stuff is, uh, is ideal. So that's why I'm here. But I just, I'm, all I'm worried about is I think people kind of associate with the name Ricky Gervais, they associate a certain level of quality. You mm. know, your live stand-up DVDs, there's a level of quality, you've put a lot of work into them, you've mm. honed it. The TV work you've done, likewise. Mm. Should people expect the same from the radio show? Definitely not. No. Definitely not. Th those things that, you know, you, you sit down where you know, you sit down, we write them for a long time, write them for a year maybe, then film them, and we worry about everything. This is, uh, I really, I'm not even sure I'm talking into the mic at the moment. <laughs> I, I was actually doodling as you saw there. Yeah. I'm eating a sandwich as we speak. Yeah. You know, that, you know, if you, although we do like music, that is true. That's we absolutely can, right. Should we play some great I'm records? Play a great record now. Uh, Dr. Fox. What's happened to him? Is he off air now? Because that's one of the reasons I've put no effort into this radio show, because, uh, you know, uh, we, we go to the Golden Globes the same month, we do nothing at the Sony, and Dr. Fox actually said, that's because you're not very good. I like the fact that the uh, Dr. Fox criticisms really hit you quite hard. <laughs> You know, you really took that I'm still talking hard. about it a year yeah, later. Exactly. You know, you've got yeah. to let it go, Rick. <laughs> yeah. And but then again, you know, he's a medical man, and yeah. Well, uh, you know, you got you got to believe him. You've got to trust his opinion. You know, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I could have done without the rectal examination. I think you could have <laughs> just said, "You're not very good." <laughs> exactly. Try and enunciate. No, I know what the problem is. Or oh, let's have a look down here. <laughs> exactly. Carl, had to you had to um, uh, go, 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 go to one of those um well clinics, no, didn't I you? Didn't, no, I'm gone. Why? Because I'm I'm not happy with it. What? I'm not happy with the whole. Well, it's just. Do people know what them places places are? We'll give you a have you, whole. Have you heard of them? Yeah, I've had one. Yeah, they they they, take, they check everything. Which you know, Suzanne, my girlfriend, was like, uh, you know, you're thirty odd now. <laughs> uh, when was the last time you went to the doctors? And I haven't been for ages because I don't. No, I never go. Doctors. I never go unless I think I'm, I'm honestly gonna die there. I'm I in just agony. Think like, they can always find something. Jane made me go to one of those well things. Yeah, those yeah. boot things where they do that. It's yeah, cut around a quid and they give you a. Com Complete head to toe, don't they? But but head, head to bottom <laughs> is what it is. The uh, they do the old uh, finger up the arse thing. Now what is that testing for? Well, I like that he said knows. it quietly because he's on the radio. You not you can't say arse. Yeah. I say it quietly. <laughs> say it quietly. Yeah, yeah. Arse. Yeah, arse. That's what well, our mistake was because we got um, a complaint up how didn't we for saying. And I'm talking about a male chicken here, which is a cock, as you know. Yeah, and we said that word, right? So if we'd have gone cock, <laughs> we'd have probably gotten away with it. You can get away with murder. If you just, yeah. If you just whisper it very So quietly. go on then, yeah, so. Go so, on then, so yeah, yeah, no, I just, uh, <laughs> I just, uh, I'm not going because I'm not having that done. I don't understand what, what they're going to find up there. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Your what, head? No, but why can't you just, I mean, it's the heart that I worry about the most. 
<laughs> you mean that in a, in a kind of romantic yeah. sense? No, no, I mean like, you know, if They'd you They'd have to have a long finger, wouldn't they, to check <laughs> that out. They go, is something wrong with your left ventricle? Yeah. Now, this thing about, this thing about the, uh, doctors, they, they hold your testicles and they make you cough. Yeah, they don't hold the testicles anymore, they just put it sort of like by the side of them. And what's that testing for? I, I, I don't know, I think it's something to do with, uh, if you've got something wrong with your, your diaphragm or something like that, you can't, you can't do it when they press there. I don't know, it, it shows you, them something. So you it's can't, not, you it's can't. not doctors having a quick feel. Mm. But, so you can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, well, that's good because do you remember when Carl said he's going to die of cancer, and I said why? He said I don't check me balls. I said why? He said I don't like the feel. <laughs> so they feel it for you. They they feel them for you, and you can you can just relax, shut your eyes, and think of England. Well, don't mess with them. What do you mean? You can do more damage messing about with them. Just leave them. And there's <laughs> two anyway. You can afford to lose one. Yeah, I don't think that's the point. I think the the point is it it sort of s spreads, doesn't it? You know, it. it You've got mm. to check the. No, I mean, I'm not saying you know if don't don't do it because they spend a lot of money saying to people, you know, have a quick feel if you've got the time, what have you. <laughs> but I, I'm not. I, I'm, I don't worry about it. Leave it. Leave it alone. <laughs> why, out of interest, why do doctors stick fingers up your eyes? Check the prostate. Check the prostate. Yeah, because if it's swollen, it's it could, yeah, it, it could you know lead to all sorts of problems. Again, they're not having a laugh, Carl. <laughs> They're not going, hang on, look at this bald little wank fella. But there's no uh, nice way- I'll feel his balls, stick a finger up his ass, and send him home. Three hundred <laughs> quid please, on you go. What about me art? It's fine. And they're all, la they're all laughing. Roger, Jeff, stand behind that two-way mirror. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what is this? No, I'm uh, not going anyway. Sorry. Really, you're not going because you don't want- No, I'm not happy with that. It doesn't even matter, it's not the fact he's a stranger. If it was someone who I knew, it'd be just as <laughs> That'd be worse! Imagine that! At a dinner party. Oh, God. Oh, well, hello. hello. Roger and Selena. Um, do you mind, Roger? Do you mind? <laughs> <laughs> Would you allow any of the celebrity doctors to do it though, Doctor Dre, uh, Doctor Fox, Fox, any of those? Doctor Who. I just don't understand in this day and age. <laughs> Would why? you allow Christopher Eccleston to stick his <laughs> big right. northern finger Let's, up your? Do you want a song on anyway? <laughs> what? <laughs> Beanie Siegel. I love this track. Oh, it's very urban for you, Rick. Beanie Siegel, feel it in the air. Beautiful track, isn't it? Well, it's wonderful. I love your summer's day like this as well, Rick. It's the yeah. ideal choice. Well, yeah. on that one. well, I'm a little bit worried that if there are any new listeners, very <laughs> unlikely, yeah. that, that, that they may, know, you know, be familiar with um, our work, but they might not know the the wonderful little gem that we found just there, a little rough diamond in the in the mud. Yeah. Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Just working here, just working away as a little producer, a little sound man, a wasn't drone. He? Yeah. And he was, uh, and we gave him his opportunity, didn't we? Mm. It's like Cinderella, wasn't it? Yeah. And but he and he grasped that opportunity, didn't you, by the horns? And three years later, you're exactly where you started. <laughs> <laughs> so good work. Got Mondays off now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought maybe a, a, a useful way of introducing the mind of Carl Pilkington. Yeah. To um, our new you, you, audience. You use that term loosely. Yeah. When I say mind, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought what, 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 Look at his face! Oh. There is a website. Have you got the oh, website? Oh, there's address? a website that we just found. Right, Carl, what is the address? If you are unfamiliar with what Carl looks like. Please um, log on to this now. Log on to this website and stay tuned, but listen, log on to the website because you'll see Carl's face, you'll see some of his pearls of wisdom. Yeah, now what's it? What's the address, Carl? Uh, freewebs.com. www. Yeah, freewebs.com. Freewebs.com. Yeah, com. yeah s forward slash. Yeah. Uh, the dash K dash man forward slash. The K man. It's okay. complicated. It is, yeah. Do it again, say it again. But get a pencil right. now, they've all got a pencil now. Freewebs.com. One word. Yeah. Slash the dash K dash man forward slash. Now when you say dash, is it is it a dash or is it, is is it, it an middle, underscore? Is it, is it underscore, is it, is it in the middle of the word or is it hover in the middle of the word or is it at the, is it at the bottom? It's just just a line and that. Yeah, I know, but is it an underscore or is it a dash? Try both. <laughs> <laughs> he covered it down. Have a, have a go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the oh. sort of level we're talking about. Well, already you've got some insight into the mind of Carl. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I thought what we should do is we could hijack. <laughs> Imagine that! Imagine Bill Gates! <laughs> yeah, or a teacher <laughs> in an exam. Hot down both. <laughs> Uh, multiple choice! Yeah. 
Um, right, okay. But anyway, yeah, if, if you're a reader of the uh, Weekend Guardian, you'll know there's this thing called the Q&A, which they, they give to uh, celebrities and thinkers and the like. Mm. And basically it's a series of questions they pose to each pe people each week, and it's the same questions, and it gives a little insight into people's minds, the way mm. they think. What so particular, what thinker philosopher is in this week's? <laughs> oh, it's the lead singer of Feeder. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you're in good company, Carl. Um, no, I like Feeder. No, fine. I love it. Feeder. So, Carl, I'm just going to fire a couple of these questions at you. We'll maybe drop them in throughout the course of the show, just to try and get a sense of who you are. Um, mm. So, here's the first up, first question. All right, you got your thinking head on? Go on. <laughs> you weasel. What is your idea of perfect happiness? Uh, what, for me, or...? <laughs> Already... <laughs> no, Ronnie Corbett. No, no, but, but what... Do you mean, like, what will make me happy, or yeah. for everyone to be happy? No, what would make you happy? Maybe that is that. Maybe that's the answer. Y your idea of perfect happiness is to everyone being happy. I don't know. What's your? What would make you totally? Unlikely. Yeah, I imagine it's a twenty-four hour monkey channel <laughs> on like the sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, go on. A never-ending popsicle. Go on, go on. Uh, I, I, I don't think I've had it yet where I'm like really, really happy with it. Carl, I've never seen you really happy. No. No, but um, when have you been at your happiest? Probably, I like I like sort of fish fingers, potato cakes, and beans for a for tea. Yeah, and you're, then, not, you're not. You're, yeah. Right. Well, let's move on. We'll come back to that one. <laughs> you know, I don't think you're aiming high enough for. Uh, well, what would your answer be for that? When are you happy? What would make you happy? Um, I I wouldn't have the. I'd have fish fingers, but I probably <laughs> wouldn't have the potato cakes. Yeah. I'd have fish fingers and beans. See, I'm not some... a huge fan of the beans. <laughs> really? So yeah. your idea of um, perfect happiness is probably just fish fingers. <laughs> just some fish fingers. Okay, good. All right. Second question: What is your greatest fear, Carl? Mm, going to the doctors. Okay. So, wow. more, so, so presumably, uh, ill health and mortality. Uh, That's how you no, do it. Just you the see? Doctors. No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't <laughs> Any particular doctor? <laughs> I don't want to live forever either. No, I just no. Good innings. I just want to get to about eighty, eighty-three, eighty-four. <laughs> <laughs> Specific. Yeah. Okay. Which living person do you most admire? Uh. Which person throughout any time in history do you most admire? Winston Churchill is pretty good. You like yeah, it's very good. Yeah, Why? Right. Good answer. Because if it weren't for him, we'd be talking German. I'm not that good at that. So. <laughs> That's, he's not that good at that. I love that, that, that even if the Nazis had won, right, in 1945, and we'd be now speaking German, he still wouldn't be that good at it. Although he's not good at English, so I suppose, yeah, I suppose he's, <laughs> I suppose that's true, isn't it? Yeah. All right, well, here's one, here's the final one for now. Do you believe in capital punishment? Uh, that's not it in Dr. Fox over the head with a stick. <laughs> depends, depends what for, doesn't it? Go on. Oh, I think something bad. And, uh, well, I assume it would be. <clears throat> they don't. They don't. They don't kill what, people what, now what, for uh, uh, parking what, illegally. But, but what sort of what sort of thing are you talking about? What sort of punishment? Capital punishment. Yeah, I know. But what is that? What what, what are you talking about? Well, guillotine hanging. Uh, uh, hanging's a bit bad. Yeah. Uh, can be fatal, can't it? What do you mean hanging's a bit bad? It's just. It's not, all bad. Why, mm, why? Why should the state kill someone? Because prisons are getting a bit busy, aren't they? Brilliant. Okay. I just, what's what's the point in keeping them, you know people people around? Well, what's the point in killing them? Just because it's like right, that's that done. Who's who's next? You know what, I mean? <laughs> what can you do with someone if they're mental? <laughs> Employ them on a radio show. Uh, yeah. Play a record, right. Carl. Next question. Play a record. Okay. We'll come back to the questions. Of, uh, what do you want? What have you got in here? Rick, I know you're a massive fan of the thorns. Yeah. But maybe you're less familiar with the uh, different elements of the thorns mm. solo work. No. Which no. Is a track from Matthew Sweet. Oh yeah. XFM 104.9, Matthew Sweet, and a song called In My Time, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It was great, that. 
Yeah, just asking Carl some of these uh, Q and A questions. This might be my idea of prep cabinets, being in a room with Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Just what I watch him. I just watch him look around. When you're talking, uh, he looks at you, and it's like you know when the owners say, "It's like the cat can understand what I'm saying." Yeah. It, it's, it's like he's on the edge look. of that. He's yeah. on the edge of that. Or you think he can, and I know he understands the words, but I don't think he understands the full impact. He never. Whenever you say something to him, it might be some, you know, a revelation or something. He always picks up on the wrong side. You go, well, that's not the important bit. Do you know what I mean? He always goes. It's a bit like having a 14 year old French exchange student. <laughs> you know, yeah. Their English is not amazing. They roughly yeah. understand you, but they're trying to piece together what you're saying. Exactly. But it, it's great. You see, um, the thing about Carl is, and d don't take this the wrong way, I like him because he's stupid, mm. in a way. <laughs> no, I'm not being funny, but do you know what I mean? But even though I think he is considered uh, stupid, some of the things he says, I think borders on the, I don't know what the PC term is, the retarded. <laughs> do you know what I mean, yeah. Carl? Anything in particular you're thinking of though, Rick, when you think of the- Well, uh... um, he was talking to me the other day, because I'm, I'm trying to write a show called Science, and he's sort of, uh, gonna help me out with some of the research, and I wanna, I want him to do some on the DVD for it, right? And, uh, he, um, was talking about it, and uh, he was talking about, um, he says that in the future, they reckon we'll be able to, soon, he said, they'll be able to take us into space, and it's gonna cost us £150,000. He said, what's the point? There's nothing up there. He said, when they went up there, right, he said, when Louis Armstrong went, <laughs> in 1966, <laughs> right, he said, it was nothing there. So there was him, a fella called Buzz, there was one and third bloke that didn't even get out of the spaceship. He said he went all that way, he didn't get out to stretch his legs. How good can it be? Forget it. That's him summing up yeah. space don't exploration. Don't, don't, don't you agree with that? What, what's the point in going up there? Because you're expanding- Are we talking about the finger in the arse again here? Or it's space? No, what, what is the point in going to- Because you're to expanding, you know, human endeavour, aren't you, in the human uh, understanding of the world and the universe. It's like, what else are we gonna do as a civilization, as a, as a people, if we're not constantly searching and, you know, and, and reaching out into the far distance? But there's nothing there, though. I know some people you grew up with that haven't left their street, but that, that's not everyone. But what is it? What do you mean there's nothing there? That, what, what, what has got to be there for it to be a worthwhile? Like, just something. What, I mean, like, to be honest- What I would you be I happy with finding out on the moon? Not video. Just, just- just something. I don't think they looked hard enough anyway when they got there, because they seemed to get out, have a bit of a dance about, and then they came straight back. And I sort of think, you know, did they look properly? It's not a day trip, is it? That's but what, what I mean is- Well, they took is, that car out there, didn't they, and drove around a bit? Yeah, but only a little bit. What I mean is, say if an alien landed in, in Africa, there's not much there, so they'd go, Phew. What yeah, do you mean there's not much that. there? Well, it's a bit barren, isn't it? Well, Africa, just in general. Well, the, anywhere the, like that, the, the desert or whatever, what I'm saying is, it's got, have a good look round. Probably the, where all life came from and uh, probably half a million yeah, species look, of animals lived there. buildings and that and stuff. Oh, so, buildings. Well, just stuff. Yeah. I mean, did they look properly? Or did they just land, get out, go, oh, a bit dusty or whatever, right, let's go back. I just think it's a bit pointless. Especially when we haven't done everything there is to do here. I Go mean, on. Well, I, I don't know, but I'm sure there is stuff <laughs> that needs sorting out. Well, there's, I know the place that there's, there's no medical man has been. <laughs> in this room. Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's, there's definitely an unexplored, uh, cavern. <laughs> right, in front. all right, Steve, would you go to the moon if someone said there's a space? He doesn't march at a concert because he's scared his glasses to fall off. Of course he wouldn't go to the moon. That They'd spin him round in training, his glasses would come off, and that would be it. He'd, yep. he'd feel sick. My worry is I'm not sure I'd get- I'd have- because I- would I be able to wear him under the helmet? <laughs> Imagine him! Like, I went- I went paintballing once, and I had to wear the glasses <laughs> underneath the mask, and of course it was a bit hot weather, it was awful- all, it was steamed up in there. Still, I couldn't see anything, I got shot straight away, I was out of the game, it was pointless. <laughs> you know, it cost me like eight quid. Yeah. You don't have to be that fit anyway, do you? You're only sort of sat there. Well, not, uh, well, yeah, but what, what are you talking about? Think of G-force alone and weightlessness. Of course you've got to be, what? Yeah. I what? think when you said think of G-force, he thought of G-4. <laughs> yeah, uh, follow up winners in Pop Idol. I can see it as his, as his eyes glaze over. Yeah. Yeah, more quick questions for you, Carl, just to try and get inside your mind. Um, what do you, uh, what is your greatest regret? Uh, probably... I didn't do that well at school, did I? So I'm, I'm trying to like learn stuff now. Yeah. But not, that not mentally, but no, you know. He reckons he's learned more in the last three months than he ever has in the rest of his life reading a couple of science books I gave him. Well, that's impressive. We'll test you on that later on. Yeah. What keeps you awake at night? 
Um, well, I live in sort of central London, don't I? So it's <laughs> brilliant. Noisy. Traffic and that. I yeah. think they were thinking more. Sort more of, of what, what, what fears have you got? What worries do you do you do, do you ponder the expansion of the universe? Do you worry about it? There's no point. There's no point, is there? Because there's nothing I can do about it. So what, with you, it's the, the what the the little Chinese fellow across the road. Just 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 stuff that that I've got to sort out. You know, any bills or anything. I don't worry about the world ending or anything. What, what's the point in that? That's <laughs> true. That I is true. I can't do anything about it. <laughs> I always think that people with more sort of intelligence have the world on the shoulders because they, they're worrying about stuff that's miles away. Whereas I'm like, you know, I'm happy if if the sun's out. It's like, oh, it's a nice day. Yeah. yeah. I don't worry about wars and stuff going on because there's now I can do. What would you do if there was a, a war that, uh, that maybe there was? What here? Yeah. Go on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Play a record, Tom. The Who. I mean, that's that's got to be one of the. Best rock tracks ever, isn't it? Oh, there's no oh, argument. Did I sound like Dr. Fox again? A little bit. Okay, that's a good, good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. We're gonna get a Sony award this oh. year. Carl, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm alright, yeah. Yeah? It's good to be back, isn't it? We're doing Rockbusters in a bit, what? Have we- Have we got Rockbusters? Well. Hallelujah! <laughs> I'll tell you this, new listeners. <laughs> Hold <laughs> <laughs> on. listeners won't believe their luck when Hold they hear on. Rockbusters. We've got Rockbusters. Have we got- well, dare I say it, have we got monkey news, Carl? Uh, well, I've been away, haven't I? So, I've sort of got a few things that I've I've read about roughly, yeah. but I don't know the full ins and outs. You're joking, because usually you do your research quite well, don't you, when you uh, get it off Ann and over and read the top line. Uh, so what are you saying, though? Are you saying that there's- it's kind of monkey news? Well, we'll we might have time to do something later. Well, we've, got, we've Listen, got to have a monkey news. I love it when he teases us with his monkey news. <laughs> we've we've yeah. had emails about that- that website address. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was- it was a- a-, a what's her name? A underscore. An underscore. Okay, so give it out one more time. They go to this to find out about Carl Pilkerton. Someone's put in a lot of effort. It's a really good website. There's some great pictures of Carl. It's well, they're not great. They're just uh, <laughs> freewebs.com/slash/the underscore k underscore man slash. Okay, forward slashes all the all the way. Yeah, except yeah. the underscores. Is there the end of course, yeah. This is interminable. Isn't it interminable <laughs> giving out email addresses? I know, yeah. It's rubbish. It's so boring. I know, yeah. Oh, dear. Is, mm -hmm. there, do, is he enjoying the show? Uh, it just says, um, I love spending two hours on a Saturday listening about fingers up asses, doctors squeezing testicles and making you cough. Uh, have you got any news on the airy Chinese kid? <laughs> so. Well, when, when you say it like that, some of the stuff we cover does sound a little bit of, uh, you know, drivel. Mm. Well, sometimes yeah. Carl was worried. Carl was worried about swearing because we were talking about finger arse and that. He's generally worried. And, and I, I don't have a problem with swearing, although I understand why you can't say certain words on radio. It might be offensive. People aren't listening. I mean, you know, the f word, the c word, and all those. But when they bleep it out, when they bleep it out in a record, they bleep out the vowel. Mm. So in the f word, they bleep out the u. So it goes for beep, right? What? What? So they go. It's not offensive. I didn't hear the vowel. Presumably, yeah. So if you change the vowel, it's not. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, in the C word, could I say, um, could I talk about the, the philosopher Immanuel Kant? Well, you can talk about Immanuel Kant because he's one of the great thinkers of, of all time. So, Kant is not an offensive word because the vowel is right. different, okay. is it? Leave it, leave it then. No, do you know what I mean though? But I, I no, don't but see how it can be offensive. You can't. It it's can't be. Really. Is it? Is it a thinker? He's a philosopher. His name is. His okay. name is Kant. That is his actual right. name. Yeah. I think it, it comes from a long line of. Kant's from what I can- oh, he hasn't changed his name. I think his father, his grandfather- oh, Yeah, they're all yeah. Like German people- Oh, that's Germany, I assume, full of Kant's. Well, I, I mean, yeah. Yeah. What? Well, <laughs> what, what else would So he can change the vowel. So could I say, um, could I say, uh, uh- Probably not. Oh, what if I change two words? What if I said cump? C-U-M-P. Now that's not offensive at all, is it? That can't be offensive. So I could say, you fulking cump. Right. Yeah. Okay. What, I, well, I, I need a schnit. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. Wonka, Willy right. Wonka. <laughs> yeah. Absolute, that's a good one. Willy Wonka. Yeah. W yeah you got, although yeah. Willy is Willy offensive? Could you say Willy? It's tricky. Willy it's tricky. Willy Wonka, and his and uh, Willy Wonka and his falcon right. cumps. Yeah. That would be fine. That would be absolutely it? fine. Is that all right then, Carl? Any other questions or anything, Steve? <laughs> well. Uh, I, I, it's not so much a question, but it's something that I think might be of interest to you, Carl. Um, I was reading about this in the paper, and I know how fascinated you are by people of the Japanese persuasion. Um, two elderly men mm -hmm. found on a remote island are believed to be Japanese soldiers in hiding since 1945, desperate to go home. Diplomats from Tokyo are investigating the claims of these men, who are 87 and 83. What? <laughs> what? 
What are you thinking there? Well, no, go on. I know what you're thinking. Go on. Say what you're thinking. I'll do that old, though. Why? Why? Say why. I don't, I don't want to. Just leave it. Leave, Carl's leave it got on. a theory. Well, I, I, th I mean, I, I don't think, I don't think th this is fine. It's, it's, I, I'd say that Carl's views don't reflect the views of XFM, mm. right? Carl's got a theory that Oriental people don't age well. Sure. Uh, let, uh, let Carl But, but that annoys that me the way, yeah, but I think what? people will probably agree with me, but for some reason, well, the first time I said that, I wasn't even worried about it, but now, because of the reaction of people, <laughs> it, I don't understand, I don't know why I can't say that. What's Be your theory? Explain your theory, in a nutshell. Just like you don't see a, 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 a you know, sort of a, a 33 year old Chinese person. <laughs> <either either. laughs> no, but, but at the same time. You what do you mean you don't yeah, see but a 33 year old Chinese person? I'm not having a go at the same time. You don't see that many fat ones either. So, in a way, that's that's good news. Nobody would be upset about that. But what do you mean? But you your news isn't bad news because it's not true. But wait, stop, stop, stop. What do you mean you don't see a 33 year old Chinese person? I don't understand. What do you mean you don't see them? What do you see then? Sort of, you know, young, young ones, uh, and then, like, you don't see that middle ground. <laughs> I don't know what this theory's based on! So you see old ones and then you see, uh, and you see yeah. young ones, but you never see any in between? Yeah. What well, do I, you mean? So what's the oldest, what's, okay, what's the oldest Chinese person you've seen before the age of 33? How old do you think? About 22. 22. So you've seen lots of 22 year olds. So you've seen a range from babies to 22 year old Chinese people. Yeah. That's fact, okay? And then what gap do you miss out? What, 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 when, when do they pop back up on the radar for you? What age has a Chinese person got to be to be older than that? About well, 49. <laughs> <laughs> so specific. What, what do you mean? When you say they don't age well, what do you mean they don't age well? You think that, you mean that middle aged ones look old? Because you think at 23, when they're 23, they're like, happy birthday to you. <sighs> And they look up and oh jeez, it's fifty two. What what do you mean? No, I just I just mean they don't age that well. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't know what it is in them, but they just don't you, all right then, here's here's a question. You tell me of a Chinese person on the telly who's about thirty two. Tell me of a Chinese person on the telly first. <laughs> G give us the great gamut of uh, Chinese talent um, currently on British TV, right? And I'll, and I'll, I'll pick and choose. Go on then. Bruce Lee. Hmm. How Andy. long has he been dead, Bruce Lee? Seventies, wasn't it? And not 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 really on the telly much, was he? Okay. What the what age was he when he died? Thirty-three, I think. Well, I wouldn't have <laughs> never guessed that. Well, what do you think? How old do you think he was? Probably about. 42. What, you know Burt Kwok? Yeah, he's old. Yeah. Do you remember the Pink Panther films? No. Okay. He wasn't that old in them, because it was 60s, 70s. But how old did he look, though? If, if, if he walked in and someone said, you never guess how old he is, what would you have said? <laughs> right then, there's my point then. There's my point. I have to say, I've been listening to you two talk, and I like the idea that there's people who've been waiting 18 months for some of this. <laughs> Kings of Leon on XFM. Carl. Age of HD Merchant Carl Pilkington. Oh. Carl, dead air. Talk. No, I'm just, I'm just looking at it now. Yeah, it's but someone... that's no good on radio. You can't just look at something. You've got to talk. Is he even more backward than I remember? I don't know. It's just that like someone's emailed in. Yeah, so you've got to tell yeah, the, know, the know, listeners that. Now I'm telling them now. I'm doing it. Someone's emailed in from Tokyo, mm. saying that he's getting married in a few months. Mm. To a Japanese woman, she's 27. <laughs> Just want to know how long I've got so she starts looking old. <laughs> well, how long do you reckon, according to your theory? Mm, about. Probably about four years. <laughs> about four years and that. So. <laughs> what would you advise him? To get out now or? Well, have some good sort of wedding pictures done and that. <laughs> Oh, it's not true. The theory's not true. Well, we'll see. We'll see, won't we? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Great. In four years' time, he's going to send the picture, going, "Oh, you're right, Carl. Look, she looks like a prune." What? He's going to suddenly start saying, "It's go." It's not true. It's not going to happen. It's that thing, though, isn't it, of looking at her mum. <laughs> There's a lot of truth in that, isn't there? That you shouldn't shouldn't really meet up with your girlfriend's sort of parents and that. Sure. Because yeah. you just sort of get a little taste of what's to come and what have you. Then what's to come with yours? Uh, it's a good job I didn't meet her early on. <laughs> no, no. You're gonna be in such trouble! No, they don't listen, it's alright. Really? Well, Suzanne does, doesn't she? 
She's probably be out. Really? But she, she knows. She's got some sense. <laughs> when you get back! Yeah. You went on holiday with them, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I've been, we've been on since then though, haven't we? I don't think so. Yeah, I went on holiday, holiday last week, been away, but that was just me and Suzanne. Talk oh, about that it? later. Yeah, okay. Oh, that, that, that's coming up. Plus, of course, Rockbusters, the return of Rockbusters. Let's start let's Rockbusters. Rockbusters. Let's do now. Rockbusters. Let's get it rolling, because we've got- I have got some amazing prizes. I went to the Americas and I brought back gifts. Not your tobacco and your potatoes, but brilliant prizes. Now, quite seriously, these are not the usual tat. You will win some tat for Rockbusters, okay? We've got DVDs, uh, CDs, uh, uh, things like that, right? But the winner of Rockbusters today We'll go through to a chance to win the prizes in the in week six. We're only here for six weeks, by the way. This is our first of six shows. Thank God for that. Yeah, and um, I got I went to I went to do the Simpsons uh, last weekend, and I've got um, a drawing here, an original drawing of Homer by Matt Groening. See that? Look at that. Uh, as Homer there, your pal Matt Groening, May the eighteenth, two thousand and five, and Homer saying, "I love Carl because he's stupid like me." And that's going to be framed, original drawing. Uh, that is worth, a, I think, a lot, but I've promised Matt Groening that it will not go on eBay. So please, I hope it goes to a fan. Um, I've also got a rare Spinal Tap poster, uh, met with Christopher Guest, and he signed that, Nigel Tufnell. Um, so, uh, fans of Spinal Tap and The Simpsons, possibly the two greatest things ever, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, also, uh, my friend Rob, who did flannels with me, has drawn us three as flannels. There's Steve there, a little gog lanker. There's me there, a little bloke dumplant, and little Carl Pilgerton, Pink Floyd numbskrunt. And these are all, these are going to be framed. So some very nice prizes. And I got a little surprise for you. Obviously, I met Homer. Um, press that little button there. Listen to this. Hi, this is Homer Simpson. I like Carl and his perfectly round bald head. If you put three holes in it, it looks just like my bowling ball. Brilliant. Actual proof that you've uh, met the people themselves, that the prizes are bona fide and genuine. But don't enter this week's Rockbusters thinking you're going to win those prizes automatically. No. This week you just win the usual tat. What is the but, tat, Steve? Well, we'll talk about that shortly. Okay. But you go forward for. to the big, uh, the big showdown, the big final competition in week six, where you get the chance to win those. All quite one person wins prizes. all those beautiful so just uh, everyone collectible goes in the draw. prizes. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, the winners of each week go into the draw. What is Rockbusters, Carl? Uh, we've wet their appetite. I think play a record and maybe some wonderful adverts and then come back with Rockbusters. It's that kind of teasing that has made this a potential award-winning show. Bronze, I think, next yeah. year. Can we just swap that round and do ads and the song? Uh, whatever way suits you, mate. Go on. <laughs> XFM 104.9, Magic <laughs> Numbers, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, I'm a little bit worried. I've just got to warn the listener, if we suddenly just go off air, right, it's because champagne is pouring down a hole where there's loads of wires into the desk. Because Steve, yeah, getting ready that. to open this champagne, right, just took that wire thing off, just put it there. Of course, because it's warm, it just it exploded everywhere. Yeah, I should explain now. I didn't bring in champagne to toast our <laughs> return to the radio. I mean, I'm not an idiot, but um. Actually, uh, from Focus PR, Ashley has rather nicely sent us some uh, Lindauer sparkling wine, and I'm just trying some, and uh, it's really quite refreshing on this uh, summer's day. So if you're perhaps working for some kind of PR agency, you know, or any kind of company, and you want to send us stuff which you want us to shamelessly promote on air, then feel free to do that. Uh, so you're just, just looking for free stuff? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, electrical goods. Um, oh, okay, it's not just like champagne Definitely stuff. Definitely not. Because I was going to say, if other champagne companies, what's that champagne company called that they sent us That's free? Uh, Lindauer sparkling wine, which I imagine is available now. <laughs> yeah, so other champagne companies feeling jealous could send you some and you'd, you'd mention it. I don't want to exclude anyone from this. You know, anyone <laughs> is welcome to send anything in. Um, Brilliant. And, and as I say, I'm particularly interested in, in um, sort of designer goods. Okay. Um, you know, the Apple Mac people, they're welcome to sure. send anything in. Sure. Now, what's annoying about that champagne opening like that is that, as you know, I brought my camera in. Um, uh, and I wanted to film you opening that onto Carl's head. Got the cork. Rick, I've got another bottle. Have you ever- I don't want you to miss out on oh, an opportunity yeah. like that. That's a bit of a waste of champagne and opening two bottles. But Carl, would you mind, cause, I, cause that would have made a cracking noise against your head, that cork going off. And uh, cause it's such a lovely bald little sort of dome. Yeah. yeah. Um, put your head, we'll put your head right down, yeah? yeah? It'll open it, we'll see what the cork does and I'll film it oh. for, uh, like a website or something. Maybe we'll make that the finale of today's show. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, sponsored well, well, by Linda yeah. Sparkling Water. Oh yeah, the sound, the sound of a cracking cork against Carl Skull. Sponsored by Linda. Sponsored by Linda. Available now. <laughs> Great. Right, we're doing Rockbusters then. Oh, okay, <laughs> now you, you should explain briefly what the concept is, Carl, because there might be a few new listeners. <laughs> Blockb <laughs> it's Blockbusters. Right, go on then. Well, no. it's not, it's not Blockbusters. No, because they were real clues, that weren't would, they? Yeah, that was actually It says they're a cryptic clue, it's not cryptic. Yeah. Well, it's, what am I, it's like, what am I thinking? This competition is like, what number am I thinking of? Rick, just calm down for a second, let me explain basically what the concept is. You'll remember some of the greats from the past. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, you give some vague clue, is that right, Carl? And from that, we're Cryptic. supposed to deduct which band or artist you're thinking of. So, yeah. for instance, there was a Well, there was one, the West Indian fella spinning a fish round his head, and that was Detroit Spinners. The Trout Spinners. Yeah, Detroit, Detroit, spinners, Detroit, Detroit spinners, spinners. Yeah. yeah. There's also what happens if you fall over into a puddle in Texas, what? Wet Knee Houston. Wet yeah, that, knee that is the Houston. level. Of Carl's That's what you're clues. working with. But could I just say, there's no irony in this. Carl doesn't think this is quirky or kitsch or ironic. This, he thinks these are. Th he thinks these could go on the Guardian crossword. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. This so, is the best I've even come up with. Yeah. Right. So, so there's there's three of them. Yeah. Right. I give you the cryptic clue. Yeah, not and to cryptic. help you along, well, it is. Yeah, uh, and really. I give you some initials of the band or the artist or whatever to help you along as well. Yeah. Uh, three no, of this them. Is, this is on the text only, we don't want emails on this one, just It's the one that gets the highest or the first one to get three. The first email with three or the first one that is the, the highest. So if, if no one gets the third one, which I wouldn't blame you for, uh, so if there's like 30 people that get two, it's the first email that comes in that we pick and uh, they win a, a handful of tat, which, would you like to go through? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll search out the tat in a second, I'm not sure it is, yeah. There's some DVDs and stuff in there, it's not bad, yeah, but uh, it means you go forward to the grand final in six weeks time when you're playing for all that amazing amazing stuff Ricky's got. We've got the signed, uh, genuine, exclusive drawing of Homer Simpson done by Matt Groening, um, featuring references to Carl. We've got the signed mm. Spinal Tap poster. This is big yeah. stuff you can't get anywhere else. No, it's a rare, it's a rare um, American poster signed by Nigel And it's Nigel such Tuffle. a shame that your only chance of winning it is with this inane quiz. Uh, absolutely. It's not, it's not down to skill or anything. Uh, it's, it's just such a shame that- Let's that just do it then. Go on then. Uh, right. The first one. Go on. Uh, what you got to remember is it's a band or an artist that sort of, that X of M play as well, right? Right then. So uh, the first one. Oh uh, yeah, because X of M play the Detroit Spinners <laughs> and Whitney Houston all the time, <laughs> don't they? All right, these three. Okay. Away, but these are these are X of M bands. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, if you got if you got like a, a ball. Oh Jesus. <laughs> I just, just I don't know, oh, the, you don't think about the cryptic clue is that every syllable counts. <laughs> he says it's different every time he says it. it there'll be some are different. <laughs> look, he's, look, go on then. Go. Right. So if you get a bulb, right? A bulb? What? A bulb. A bulb. What's a bulb? What's a bulb? Like a. I like bulb. I like bulb. <laughs> oh, okay. a, a light bulb. So okay, you get yeah. a bulb. You get a bulb. Yeah. 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 <laughs> go on. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone. Right. Go on. So you get a bulb. Right. Oh, yeah, a bulb, yeah. Have you got something in your throat? What are you doing? Are you eating a gobstopper? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm gonna play a song then. No, come on! <laughs> get, get the clue out, for goodness sake! So the, the cryptic clue is, so, if you get a bulb, right, so- <laughs> <laughs> That's the beginning. Okay, great. Right, oh. right, if you get a saw, then right, if you get a bulb, like, go on. And you look after it, right, you look after that bulb, mm. and you teach it stuff, Jesus Christ. What are you doing there? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is extraordinary. This That's is extraordinary. Amazing. Imagine that written down in the He's telegraph. He's 18 months to get this. Imagine right? it. That's, that, that's not a clue. That's an essay. I don't know what it is. It's a conversation I don't know with if yourself. He a light bulb, a bulb like you plant in the garden. What kind of bulb does he mean? Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. Right, you get a bulb. Well, um, well, remember that, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. No, okay, it doesn't no, matter. It, it does, but I can't say too much. <laughs> <laughs> right, so listen, let me just do it again. You get a bulb, right? Yeah. When it's young, you look after that bulb, yeah. you teach it stuff and what have you. What have you done there? What, what's gone on? <laughs> William! And so what are the initials size? of the band? R. Right? R. R for rabbit, right? So what's the band there? Second right. one. Jesus. Uh, people have a problem doing this. When they get home from from like an, a night out drinking, right? What what's the problem they've got? Right, the the initial there uh, K. What's the band? Right, people get in from uh, having a night out. They have a problem doing this. What is it? What's what's, what's the problem? Okay, <laughs> and clue right. number three. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. Right, that's that's C. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. You had a vision of that Chinese flu. Yeah, and, and that's the, the letter C. C. Right, so three bands there, 
Three uh, cryptic clues. Not really. Text in 83XFM. Just just send the three uh, three band names. That'll do, won't it? Can they do a website as well? If they want, they can email in. Well, tell them what it is. Yeah, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Just send it in there. Give them again uh, quickly then, Carl. Right then, so get a bulb when it's young and that. Look after it. Brilliant. Different. Totally different. Teach it stuff and all that. Okay. Ah, ah, what's the band, right? The second one. Mm. People have a problem doing this when they get home late at night. You mm. know, they've been out drinking and that. They get home. What, yeah. what problem are they going to yeah. mm. K is the initial. Mm. Third, third one. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. What do I mean? Mm. Brilliant. C. C is the initial. Play a record. I mean, it's, it's abomination. Right, go. Embrace, glorious day on XFM 104.9. Rick, there may be listeners um, tuning in thinking they've got something better to do, for instance, switching off the radio and just staring blankly at the wall for uh, the next <laughs> half an hour, but yeah. no, because what they're going to miss is our grand finale oh, yeah. to this, which is of course um, sponsored by sponsored by Lindauer's, the uh, sparkling <laughs> sparkling wine solution to a hot summer's day, Yeah, uh, that we're going to be firing a cork. Did you just make that up? Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. good. Um, <laughs> They're going to be firing a cork uh, at Carl's head uh, just for the sound. I, the sound I just think it's sound. Huh? It's not happening. Yes, it's it is. It. You said no, no. We've said it is now. We promised it to the listeners. Yeah, come on. I'm not happy with it. Why? Because the pain. Well, I, I've never had it done, so I don't know how painful it is. Well, all the well, more reason to do it then. Yeah, we've got to try it out, haven't you? It's you're perfectly. It's 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 like oh. a little like a little cowbell yes. or wood block. He said, <laughs> I, "That's what I'm hoping for." Yeah. I'm hoping for pop. Mm. Like, uh, and I'm gonna film it for my website. Brilliant. So go to that this week, um, uh, rickyjervais.com mm -hmm. and see Carl Pilkerton getting hit. A, a high-powered cork coming out of, um, a, a Lindauer sparkling wine. <laughs> Lindauer sparkling wine. And of course, if you uh, want to send us anything in, and perhaps next week that you feel we could, um, actually, that, maybe that'd that's be great. It. That's you the. That's the. Us to do this is like interactive because a lot amazing. of people plan the show. Like Dr. Fox plans his show. We sort of come up, we riff on the. So we, that's a great idea. Send stuff in that we could harm Carl with. Yeah, we harm Carl. Him. Harm Carl. We yeah. do a do a jingle. Harm Carl. I've and always wanted one on. of those George Foreman grills. I've oh, always wanted one of them. I know, but that's too uh, the, too much, isn't it? We could. What if we just pressed his head inside it? But, we'd, but, have to, we'd have to put it on. Put, no, just, put it on. See, yeah. see, yeah. Just squeeze his oh, head inside it. I've got to do that thing with a tea towel one day. You know that thing I did with a tea towel? You put a tea towel around his head, right? Tie it. I put a wooden spoon in, and you only have to turn it like a couple of inches, and it it kills you, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it really is, yeah. yeah. So we'll be firing a cork at Carl's head. I'll be filming it for the website. Website. So that's coming up be about, uh, about ten to three. Look forward to that. Yeah. Plus, oh, do you know what? I'm loving this. This is my. Oh, I just. Uh, oh, just being in a room with him. I just can't. I want to squeeze his head all well, the time. I'll tell you, if you're a fan of um, imbeciles and idiots, yeah, you're missing out if you're not watching Celebrity Love Island. I, I watched about well, thirty seconds of it and I hate them. Just, uh, just desperate uh, idiots and slappers. <laughs> I, I actually. Angers me. I, I I switched on Celebrity Love Island. The first thing I thought is, where's a tsunami when you need one? <laughs> but, um, but, but seriously, but there's a guy on there. There's a guy on there. Paul, De I think his name's Paul Denan, ex of um, Hollyoaks, and he's an absolute joy because, like Carl. He's an absolute simpleton. Oh really? It's fantastic. And he was on one week, and he was talking about how he fancied lazy Lady Isabella Harvey. Oh yeah. And he said to her, he said, um, thing is, right? I really fancy her because um, she don't like reading books, and I don't like reading books. <laughs> oh, I've got something cool. But I have the idea that, they, that he's attracted to someone for something they don't do. <laughs> I know, you know. Yeah. I've never killed a kid. She's never killed a kid. What, We're gonna get what married. about sleep around? That yeah. would be a good thing to be attracted to someone for. Oh, just honestly, and Big Brother's the same. Is it? Just a load of ropey old cats. Um, uh, yeah, I know, just like a horrible, cellulited, wobbly, rice arsed fat titted tarts oh. and idiots and show offs and are there they're all they uh, they they all disgust me for a different reason. Mm. I don't know which one to hate <laughs> most, most and why. They 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 all give me a couple of reasons to hate That's them. That's what the nomination should be. Yeah. You know, nominate who do you hate the most? Because I Absolutely. I you know, I thought I was gonna switch on and find that actually, you know, people like Abby Titmus and Rebecca Luz had been misrepresented presented by the press. Oh, well, the one that wanked off a pig in public? Yeah. Oh yeah, go on. Yeah. Yeah. Was that, did you say wonked off? 
I said one top a one pog. Yeah. One top a pog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> great, isn't it? But I mean, so, so, so uh, it's uh, amazing, Rebecca. I mean, let's, uh, don't even get me started on Abby Titmus. Don't well, even get me. There's, there, 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 don't. Uh, I like the idea of her, uh, of her parents perhaps going to, you know, some kind of, um, you know, someone's birthday or whatever, meeting some old friends who've oh, yeah. been away living in another country. Yeah. How's young Abby? Is she still a nurse saving lives? No, she gets her tits out for a living now. Aren't you funny? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rebecca, Lu Rebecca Lou's, um, by her own admission, I don't know if it's true, but by, but she said, she sleeps with a married man, then sold a story to Edwards, then wank wonked off a pog, <laughs> yeah. right? That's a hell of a CV, That's, isn't it? I'm looking forward to that. That is amazing. Maybe. I bet her Nan's very, very proud of her. Yeah. Uh, are they all- are they, are, oh, God, don't- just forget it. Don't get me started. I'll be watching every night for the oh, next yeah, ten yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't not. Is it? it you, my adrenaline rushes. I and you, you get. Oh God! I'll just tune in to see. You, uh, it's almost like you tune in to see which one gets hurt. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Emotionally scarred. But maybe one of them will come through. What we'll find out. We're always going to be exactly. We're going to find out that one of them was like re had a really, really bad child, and we feel sorry for her for yeah. a little. You know, like the Jade Goody syndrome or something. And yeah. oh God, yeah. then they release an exercise video. Oh, Carl. We gotta get in you in on this. Oh, imagine Carl in Big Brother. That would be a joy. That would be amazing. But you turned on and you hated it, didn't you? Yeah, I gave it like three minutes and it's gone. Yeah. There's always something better on though. You annoy me that like, you watch it. You may yeah. about it now, but you I watch know, it. I know, I, I know, yeah, I know. There's always something better. I, I, I really did not watch any of Celebrity Love and that was just too awful. I think the celebrities are worse than uh, um, general public though to me because if they're so desperate, they want nine little bites of the cherry and it's it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Or at least these people, you know, they, they think that they're gonna get out of their uh, job they don't like maybe or, you know, it, it's sort of like. I, I, you know, I give them their fifteen minutes, but it's oh god. Oh. But, but there's always something. I mean, when we went, were out the other night, Steve, right? There's a program on about uh, a spider that's a foot long and eats chicken. No <laughs> one's, <laughs> no one's talking about I don't it. Know what, to stop. what do you mean? What do you mean? No, well, I, I just. I'm sorry. I had to stand up because I thought I was going to explode. What do you mean? There's a spider that's a foot when, long when and eats we, chicken. There was a program on about it about yeah. how there's this spider in the jungle somewhere, but yeah. I missed it because it was out. But no one's talking about that in the papers. <laughs> that's me. That's that's a worry. <laughs> that's about why. In case it nicks your Sunday roast. What do you mean? No, it well, no, but if it likes chicken, no, Rick. You know, yeah, yeah. In, in like two years, taste. Time, who knows what it might. I know. Like. It move up the evolutionary ladder. No, it start liking Carl, then humans. No, I'm not yeah. Yeah. about the chicken bit because I eat chicken. That isn't that shocking. But the fact it's a foot long, <laughs> and and no one's it's just on on a Thursday night. No one's talking about it. <laughs> what do you expect? No. What do you expect from this? It's got a, its own PR. What do you want? What do you want this spider be to be famous? What? What? Where is it? Where is it? It's in the jungle. It's not worrying anyone then, is it? It's not going to move. Well, why? It's not well, going to. What do you mean? What do you mean it's not going to move? Well, how is it going to get here? Is it going to get on a bus? These waves and that—they come in bananas and all that. So don't worry about it. So uh, <laughs> I'm not. If you're going to be like that. Anyway, listen, um, we better line up Babushka, we better play that surely, because I know you need to analyse those lyrics. Yeah. Um, that's very important to you, I know. We've still got that cork, uh, Oh, hitting. cork on their head's gonna be great. We're gonna put his little head down and really we'll give it a fire in. Sponsored by Linda Respark. Jesse's Girl by Rick Springfield. And the reason I played that is twofold. One, it's one of the prizes we're giving away. It's an album called Rock Gods, and that's with a Z, right, and an umlaut over <laughs> the O. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it's got it's got Kiss, Judas Priest, Deep in the Darkness. It's, I mean, it really is good. It's all it's all your classic um, rock tracks. The other reason I want to play it is because I like that song, and it's a great little up tempo bubblegum pop song, rock. You know, great. But it's got one of the worst lyrics in it. He's, uh, you know, he's worried about, um, bringing up the fact that he loves his girlfriend's, uh, his, his, uh, his bo uh, mate's girlfriend. And he goes, I'll bring it up, he goes, uh, oh, you know, I tell her that I love her, but, um, the point may be moot. <laughs> Just <laughs> uh, you don't use that in a rock song. Know, yeah. The point may be moot. <laughs> well, I was listening to uh, yeah. Christian O'Connell on the breakfast show when he had these bounty hunter thing running a couple of weeks back, and um, I don't know what happened, but anyway, he ended up with Brian Adams in the studio doing a live session. Brian, you know, good nature or whatever, yeah. but it, you can't help but feel with Brian that he sort of he thinks that he's Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. But there's something wrong. I mean, he's got the voice and the guitar, he can play and everything, but yeah. there was a lyric and he, he he played it completely earnestly, and it was a session, and the lyric was something. It was from his recent album. And the lyric was along the lines of, and I, I'm paraphrasing, but it was along the lines of, um, uh, I, I'm sat in my hotel room, there's a knock at the door and I get kind of nervous. I'm hoping it's you, it's just room service. <laughs>
<laughs> which is extraordinary. But Christine came up with the best. Uh, it came, they finished it, and obviously Christine was thinking, what did I say? And he came up with the best answer if you've had a session that you're not entirely convinced by. He just said, quite simply, that sounded great. That's good. Which is amazing. That, yeah. Who are you complimenting there? The engineer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like... The sound recordist. Oh, what does that mean? That's great. That sounded great. Yeah, good. We got some good mics. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Brian Adams. Is it true he bought the pub next door to him and closed it down because they were noisy? I hope so. Yeah, that's a good. That's what yeah, money's yeah, yeah. for. Oh, that exactly. is what money's for, isn't Absolutely it? Absolutely right. Waking up the neighbours. That was his album, mm. wasn't it? That, that was. Right. That, that's that was. Right. I don't know if that was before or after that. Whether it was related or not. Well, if you but, buy a house next to a pub, you know what you're going to get. Yeah. So move, rather than ruining the fun for everyone. It's more good advice from Carl Pilkington. Carl, well, while we're talking to you, we should give these answers to Rockbusters. It's the big quiz. Um, and of course, the winner this week goes forward to play in the grand final mm. in six weeks' time where they get to win all these amazing gifts. We signed, a signed Homer drawn yeah. um, especially stuff, yeah. for, for Carl by Matt Groening. Uh, Nigel Tufnell signed rare poster. They're, they're, they're amazing. Should we give away a sort of uh, maybe a, a, a Original print of behind the scenes of extras. We've got some amazing yeah, pictures filming time. extras. I was thinking the other day, you know, like I'm how excited I am to be with Carl and let off corks on his head. Well, our editor, long suffering editor Nigel, we'd worked with Ben Stiller, Kate Winslet, Sam Jackson, all these people for eight weeks. It was amazing. But my highlight, I, was, I was that thought about it, and my highlight was dressing Nigel up, our editor, in a baby grow. Sure. It was, I planned it, we got the, 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 um, department, um, uh, costume department hired it and we just, and it looked brilliant, didn't it? Yeah. And it's just, and it's that is BBC licence fee money <laughs> going towards you dressing up your editor. Because you didn't pay for it. The BBC paid for it, so that <laughs> is how your money has been spent, people. But, but, it's available on the DVD again. Exactly. Nothing's wasted. Which you have to buy for <laughs> 15 quid. <laughs> Sure. So, yeah, it's, it's, a win -win, it's, it's, win -win. Like, it's the whole thing is one big reality game show, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Anyway, so, the answers, give us the, give us the. Go on, give us the clue. I haven't got an give idea. Go on, give me the clue then again. Right. Well, do you want to say who the winner is or? No. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's hear the answers. Uh, first, first clue was uh, if you get a bulb when it's young, you yeah. look after it and that you teach it stuff. Yeah. What's going on there? Go yeah. on. The initial was R. Yeah. Right. That was that was razor light. All right. Raise a light, you raise a light. Raise yeah, light. Okay. kind of works. Yeah, Second it didn't matter one. what sort of bulb it was then. <laughs> it was very sure. specific. Go uh, in mind, go on. People have a problem doing this when they get home from a night out drinking. Yeah. What's the problem they're having? They have a problem getting the key in. Getting the key in, that key in, key in, key in. That's the. That's awful. Works. That doesn't count. Works. Key in. Key it right. in. It's keen. It's yeah, keen. It's one to. Right. Awful. Uh, awful, 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 awful. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. Yeah. Uh, that, the initial I was C, that was Caesars. Caesars, Caesars, Caesars. They managed to get that as well. Who's Dream. I love the fact that even he knows they managed to get that as well. Did anyone get all three? Yeah, a few people That's did. terrible. Okay, who's the first one? Who's I don't first? know what it says about XFM and its listeners that people are getting these answers, right? I know. Go on then. I mean, horrific. But anyway, we're going to give it, and he goes forward, as I say, for the big, pri the big prizes in uh, six weeks' time. It's Paul in Bookham. Where well done, well done, Paul Bookham. But also he does get um, the uh, complete series of uh, Alias, League of Gentlemen, that Rock Gods album. Um, so you know, it's, it's, it's pretty good. But Open Water on DVD and a chance to win all those prizes. Brilliant. Yeah. Coming up next, a cork smacking a bald man yeah. on the bumps mm. really hard. London, it's your city. XFM 104.9 playing Green Day. Uh, the studio's falling apart. I know, his microphone broke. Mine broke. You, Rick, I don't know why uh, Lindauer's, the sparkling wine, <laughs> want to be associated with this shambles of a show. It is falling apart. This is awful, this dude. It's got to be fixed. Right? Right now, Carl, come on, here. It's the time where I'm going to. Let a cork off. Do you want to film this, Steve? Yeah, the website? That'll be available that on the website next week. Wikijaways.com. So see Carl getting hit. One bloke suggested we leave the metal cap on because it's get a better pitch. Mm -hmm. But we'll take that. <laughs> He's taking. Let's get the Wait. camera ready. Get the camera ready. Ready? So if you just joined us, um, we are yeah. using some Lindauer's sparkling wine <laughs> to basically, well, what can I say? We fire a cork at Carl's round right, ready? head. Ready? Hang, on, hang on a sec, let me just put the headphones on. Alright, film this then. Okay. He's in position, look. Just firing right. up. Okay, Carl, Carl, come on there so we can see your head a little bit. I want, we want to get the noise, the microphone there. Right, ready? Hold on. Good. So you're just right. doing it. Hold on. Now, it's in position. <laughs> what if it... it oh. Ready? Yep. Oh, God, it... Oh! No! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, it's like it's like jackass. <laughs> did it hurt? Did it hurt me? What do you mean? Did it hurt you? I sort of just. I... It. I went off. It went off course. Did it? Just glanced. Did it? Right, Linda, are you going to send us um, eight more bottles, please? Yeah, we're, so we're going to get this right. Yeah. Homesick. Kings of Convenience. Beautiful. Yeah, On XFM 104.9. Well, that's nearly the end of our first of six shows, I'm our just summertime back to special. Some of, the, some of the highlights, Rick, so far today. I don't know what you've made of it. We, we Finger up the arse. Finger up the arse. Testicles early on. Uh, um, Orientals don't age very well. Bit of, Kent, bit of racism. Bit of racism with the uh, Germany's full of cants. Yeah, that, that was our That isn't swearing. Um, um, cork, cork on the air, champagne down the electrical <laughs> works. <laughs> So yeah. good. Just to, the, the finale is uh, it's monkey news, obviously. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, chimpanzee, that monkey news, yeah. Well, there isn't. Uh, I've been away, haven't I? Oh, uh, there's been no monkey news. You can't get. No, no, but I haven't had, had a proper chance to sort of, you know. Uh, Carl, your monkey news is of spurious tales from the 17th century sometimes. <laughs> so let's have one of those. No, let's have a so monkey that, who dressed as Zorro and they thought he was uh, a woodsman, but when they took his head off, he was only he was a four foot hairy chimp. <laughs> let's have one of those ridiculous stories. Well, we've we've done that though. But uh, do you want to go back on some of the ones? Oh, for sort of just what is the monkey one? news? There must have been some monkey news this right. week. The only thing that sort of stood out, do you know, like they're having problems. You're just making this up. Where's your information? Where's the piece of paper? Where's the document? What is this? Because I've been away, so I haven't got anything. Right, let's to just hit, let's, 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 but let's it's hear bad it enough out. when he's reading it, he gets it wrong. When he's just riffing, it's going to be absolute twaddle. Let's hear it out. Right? Do you know, like they're having problems getting new new um, people to be policemen? Oh, for <laughs> go on. They've uh, in America. They're taking them on to, uh, sort of join the SWAT team. <laughs> They've taken what on? Some little monkeys. Okay. Uh, giving them walkie-talkies and all that. And, uh... Well, they can't talk. <laughs> they're just walkies. They don't have to... <laughs> yeah, they're giving them some walkies. What do you no, mean? What, what was... being given commands and that. And, uh, they go Well, so it's one way. They, they tell them. They've got the little things well, strapped to them. They're good at, like... Getting into small, sort of, you know, small places and that, and sort of, you know, cracking stuff and all that. Like I say, it's just half a story I just picked up on. That's not a story. Well, what do you want? Monkey news. Well, I'll, I'll get some better stuff next week, but I've literally like got off a plane. This is the ago. worst. Uh, this is one of the worst shows we've ever done. And that's saying something, Rick. This we've is, done some tripe. <laughs> this is nothing. And to end with, the the police in America have given monkeys walkie-talkies. That's nothing. That is a disgrace. And what? what do you mean that you've not had enough time to prepare? We've been off air for 18 months. Yeah. yeah what, there's been no accumulated monkey news in that time? It's got to keep it fresh, though, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Great, well, what time you Speed of sound. Steve, I know you, uh, like an insight to my, um, musical taste. Always. Oh, but that's my favourite Coldplay track of all time. I just thought I'd, uh, just throw that in. Not a fan of clocks? Uh, no, I think I, uh, I uh, overplayed uh, Parachutes a little bit and, uh, but, uh, so that's my favourite one. I like it. I'm, uh, I'm afraid to say I'm a bit of a Philistine when it comes to Coldplay. That sounds the same as all the other ones. I'm sorry to say. Oh. Yeah. You'll have to meet these boys one day. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll tell them to their face, I don't care. A little bit rock and roll. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> well, I'm Ricky Gervais. That little, uh, funny little words all type voice over there is Stephen Merchant. And with us are producer Carl Pilkington. All right? All right. Whenever we say producer, of course, that is in inverted commas. Yeah. Done with the fingers. Well, he, I, he didn't have it. I wanted to play some off my iPod today to record it because they didn't have it here. Uh, it's a great track called Anthony and the Johnsons. He didn't even have the lead. He went, right, it's difficult. And he, and he went, is it any good? I went, yeah, it's really good. He went, well, why haven't we got it here already then? Oh! Oh, <laughs> that's the, yeah, that's the paradigm, is it? If X-Man hasn't got it, it's no good. Four non-blondes doing well, is it? That's still in the cupboard, is it? Unbelievable. We're a little bit annoyed today, aren't we, actually? I'm really annoyed. Yeah. All that stuff we did last week, um, uh, that Landau sent us some sparkling wine, and we thought, right, we're 
well, you shamelessly plugged it. Yeah. How many times you mentioned it? I like twenty mentioned times. It about twenty times. We we uh, well, the finale was hitting Carl on the head with a cork. That's on the website, by the way. Okay. RickyGervais dot com. Go there and see Carl being hit in the head with a cork. Right. Yeah. We and we said, look, send us free stuff. We'll talk about it. Nothing. The 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 the. Cupboard I mean, literally is nothing. Empty. The cupboard is bare. No one has thought. I tell you what. There's, the, there's, there's those guys from the office. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean let's be honest, Rick. We are taste makers. We're yeah. opinion formers, you and yeah. I. Yeah. And you'd have, you'd have thought if anyone was going to send us some free stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, it makes me fume. And well, do you know what it is? It's right. because people, PR people and that, they've realised no one's listening. But not only are we going against all our principles and losing our dignity just for some free stuff. And integrity. And integrity, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're going against excellent policy because obviously they would have got thousands of pounds for Landauer to be mentioned <laughs> last <laughs> week, on, 20 right. times. No, it wouldn't have. It's 40 quid. Right? It's 40 quid. <laughs> yeah. for a, 40 quid for a nine minute advert. <laughs> exactly. So advertise your quality <laughs> stuff here. Yeah. Jeff's garage. S cheaper than some other garages. <laughs> uh, uh, we do. We, uh, anyway, uh, uh, actually, did so we play an advert once for a <laughs> tattoo parlor? <laughs> yeah, do you remember that? I'm sure yeah, you've yeah, heard of yeah, it for yeah, a tattoo yeah, parlor. Yeah, yeah. What, who can, what tattoo <laughs> parlor can afford to advertise on a radio station? <laughs> Unless it's a tin pot one like this. Oh God! Oh, I've got good some good music today, though, Steve. Oh, really? I hope so. I'll be the judge of that. Go yeah, on. Well, 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 AC DC. Oh. <laughs> A bit of uh, bare skin, you need uh, colouring in. Come along to uh, Ron's bike shop and tattoo parlour. He'll write mum on your hand and give you Harley a tune up while you wait. I can't believe no one wants to advertise with us. And that only costs what, 20 quid? Yeah. And they'd play that I mean, I turn down millions of pounds to do adverts because I think it's beneath me. I don't, and I thought last week I'll give it a little bit back. I'll give, I'll excite all these people who want to get it. They, Nothing. All I'm thinking is, Steve, either. We, our cash rate's gone down, no one wants us anymore, mm -hmm. right? Which is impossible, surely. I would have thought so. Or, we're on a tin pot station that no one listens to. Now- Ding! <laughs> Correct answer. <laughs> Correct answer. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm having to hold on the pop shield of this mic because it keeps falling off. It's embarrassing. This it's whole awful. Room is embarrassing. I mean, uh, oh, God. Well, Carl, what, what are your thoughts? Why have you stuck it out here? Uh. Nothing better coming in, I thought. Well, I'll tell you why, because you're always on holiday. You don't do a lot. Oh. You get paid, you know, well, doesn't he, really? He's a moany. I don't, I mean, he doesn't try and get on at all. He doesn't deal with people. He moans about everything. And, uh, you know, so he's. I'm alright. I've got my own little room and that. Yeah. <laughs> like a cage. It is like a cage, yeah. isn't it? And he can shut the door, shut the door. If people walk past him, shut the door. He doesn't want to look in. He's like a, he's like a miserable old chimp. Did you, we notice today how much he is he's Simeon, isn't he's he? He's very strange, actually. Um, we maybe should try and get a picture on the website because Carl's arms are particularly chimp-like. <laughs> it's very, really very strange. Because he's got that sort of, he's got long downy hair. It's and not the like- long extended knuckles. Yeah, yeah. And his totally round face that sort of the chin goes back and the, uh, the dome of his cranium. I think, quite seriously, Seriously, I know we sort of share about 98.5% of our genetic material with um, uh, bonobos and chimpanzees, but I think he's got a little bit more. Yeah. I, j I honestly think he's a little bit of a throwback. Just his line, they just kept to this sort of really the ugliest one in the cave yeah. and the tree, and he really didn't. He didn't come out of it. I'm not saying you are. You know, I don't think you. Well, you are. Yeah, you're chimp-like. No, it does. It does annoy me. Me air annoys me on me body and that. Because I've got, I've got like air on me, on my little toes and that. Have you? And on the legs. Uh, would you like... t see your little toes? Can you pick things up with them? I've never tried. Okay. Well, that's that's, that's the finale of this week's show. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to yeah. see if he can play a record and put the fader up from using... a tire <laughs> while <laughs> yeah, swinging on a tire, just using his toe, his hairy toes. Yeah, I've sort of got air all the way, but then it just runs out where it should be. On the I know. Yeah. Top of yeah. yeah. And do you, is this part of the reason why you're always uncomfortable about you know being nude or around na naked people? Uh, is that part of the reason? Do you think because you look so grotesque? Well, when I'm on holiday, I don't really like wandering about without a top on unless. Like, it's a quiet beach or whatever. Sure. So no, what would you normally no wear? Sure, I just have like a nice sort of light, summery, sort of linen shirt maybe, just yeah. a few top buttons open. Yeah. But I don't, I, yeah, I don't like, the naked body isn't that nice anyway, is it? You know what I mean? Whatever it is, if you're a cat and you're shaved, you don't look that nice. 
Do you know what I mean? But with I'd be able, I think you'll it. find a cat is naked even with its fur on. The cats don't wear clothes. No, but what I mean is a, right. bald, a bald cat isn't that good. You know, you no. know it does me head in that I'm bald. I'm not, you know, I wish, if I could have hair, it would be nice, but that's like- Would you prefer like, animals to wear clothes like Mickey Mouse does? <laughs> Or goofy. You know that I don't like Edith and all that, we've done it. But don't you think sometimes you could sort of like, maybe, uh, um, I don't know, fancify a, a little bit? Like, um, if, if there was such a thing as a, an ape, um, salon, and there isn't, Carl, <laughs> there isn't, right? Um, would you, you know, give a, a orangutan a, ch a trim, maybe start with hair? Because some of those look like they're going bald, but they've got a they comb should, over, they don't should they? just have a shave. Well, <laughs> it's like that. That's what I did. Take it back. <laughs> and the underarms as well. Yeah, they, they've really got a lot of underarm hair. Um, even the women ones. Really? Yeah. That's disgusting. I know. I don't know. I don't even know why they breed. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how they get they laid from those horrible old, uh, hairy <laughs> ginger orangutans. <laughs> yeah, they are particularly grim, some of those. I know, yeah. The big ones. I know, Ginger yeah. ones. Yeah. <laughs> they can't be happy, can they? What is that? What, why is... Where did that happen, the, the ginger thing? Why do people give them, like, a hard time and that? Well, you just gave them a hard time then, so why did you do it? You no, were just flying in, were you, to it? People, people do sort of give... I, I, don't, I don't understand why, but ginger people get quite a bit of stick and I, I've never understood it. No, I was doing it, it's just, I don't know why. I they don't do know. They do don't they? I don't know, it might be historical, it might have been because... I, I, I'm sure they don't everywhere in the world, I'm sure it's probably... No, they are, they're always... I've, I've said to you about even, like, ginger cats are always fat because they... You're sort of sick of it, probably. <laughs> oh, play a record! Wait, 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 wait. Ginger cats, what do you well, mean they're sick of it? Well, when you see a ginger they, cat- They've been eating, like, because yeah, they're upset, they've been bullied and things. You never see, like, a thin, happy ginger cat running about. It's always overweight and looking a bit fed up. It's <laughs> just a good point, isn't it? <laughs> I wouldn't say it was a good point, Carl, it's a point. So, last week, the Chinese don't age well. Now, anything ginger, including cats, yeah. No, I'm no, sick of it. No, but I'm just saying. Are I, you I ginger? Would you like to take issue with any of uh, Carl's points? 83 <laughs> XFM is your text. You can text us. Maybe you've got. Maybe you've seen a thin ginger I'm not, cat. I'm not having a go though. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's weird how, how people give them our time. And it's uh, if I could have air, I'd go for ginger air rather than being bald. Really? Mm. <laughs> from Ben Folds on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. I had a fax. Mm -hmm. Never mind champagne and freebies like that. Just forget that. We're not doing that anymore. It didn't work, okay? But we are still in demand. Got a fax here, right? Uh, so guy says, I produce a program for the BAS scientists, right? Wintering in Antarctica. Now what this bloke is saying is, there are scientists, right? Um, researching in Antarctica, and they're soon, they're already locked away and sort of like out of touch because they can't get to them, right? But they're soon going to be living in 24 hour darkness because through midsummer here, it's, it's darkness for 24 hours for like three months and they're Jeez. totally cut off and he's trying to get some stuff together and he wants us to record a message and it said, um, uh, every year, um, uh, they, they choose a celebrity to do something, a message, uh, uh, of, uh, of their choice. They had Rolf Harris, David Attenborough, Jonathan Ross. This year, Ricky is the popular choice. Mm -hmm. So, I'm up there with Rolf Harris, David Attenborough and Jonathan Ross. In, in terms of the vote amongst some scientists stuck in a hut <laughs> in Antarctica for three months. I so. think they just, they just got cabin fever. So that's they another poll, so that's another poll I've won. <laughs> uh, a British <laughs> Antarctic scientist in a hut poll. If I was trapped in a little room with <laughs> several other men for three months of pitch oh, darkness, I, Sexist. But, or, or indeed women. Yeah. I can't imagine why I'd ever want a message from Rolf Harris. <laughs> <laughs> why would Rolf, I mean, like David Amber, fascinating. Well, I Jonathan assume Ross, it is the, it's the, it's the animal, that I, I assume they're researching penguins or something, aren't they, if they're stuck there. Or maybe but what's that seismic activity, or maybe polar, uh, uh, shift, I don't know. Possibly if you were researching kangaroos. Yeah. Oh, well, he, know, he knows about all animals, doesn't he? You can take him a budgie with a broken wing and he'll sort it out. Or he knows a man who does. Sure. He can, you know, he'll, he'll sort that out for you. And they do a picture of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, while yeah. you wait. Yeah, so, yeah. uh, but anyway, I thought they want a five minute message. We can do better than that. Let's dedicate the whole show to them, Steve. We can what? 
dedicate the whole show to them. What was it, trouble with my diction? A little bit. I'm just thinking again, you know, we've got to slow down because <laughs> these guys are there, they're, they're working, they're busy. They're used to, uh, like speaking eloquent yeah, <laughs> English. Yeah, exactly. They're used to talking to intelligent, yeah, educated people. Yeah. So Carl should be something of a surprise <laughs> to them. I imagine they'll just flood back early and come back to study him. <laughs> So, this is, uh, this, this show is dedicated to all you sight- I know nothing about them. I don't know how many there are. I know they're just, as I say, in a hut somewhere, presumably with a laptop, drinking, uh, hot chocolate out of steel mugs <laughs> with- Just looking up porn. <laughs> <laughs> they're not yeah. on the internet, are they? Oh, are they not? Well, no, well, there's no the phone laptop? line. Well, well how do they charge up the laptop the, when it runs out? Well, they've probably got generators. They must have other stuff. They've they, they got Italian now, haven't they? Of course they have. No, for DVDs and things. Well, they could probably, yeah, they could probably have a, uh, a DVD player that, that would run off a generator and stuff. So they can play, I don't know what we're giving this on CD or something. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. um. And what are they. What, how can that enhance your life, though? That you, uh, like, two months has gone, you've sat there, you, you, you're chewing um, Kendall Mint cake and. Uh, uh, and just looking round at white walls, right, thinking that the thing's gonna come in any minute and put you <laughs> out of your misery, yeah. right? And you go, all right, lads, it's here, what? A five minute message from Ricky Gervais. <laughs> yeah. Who? <laughs> the, uh, fellow from the office? <laughs> oh, yeah. Go on. I mean, so, yeah. I don't know how I can enhance. I mean, but I go I voted, to One of them's going, I voted for Ricky Martin. I, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. But I don't understand, um, what they're researching. You say penguins, but that's just a hypothesis. Well, I'm assuming that, cos it's Antarctica, where, where the, uh, the penguins live. Is there anything else there? What else is going on? Well, there's presumably climate differences and Well, yeah, cos it's a, it's, it's a landmass, isn't it? Arctic's just on ice, and Antarctica is actually a continent, it's a landmass, so there's stuff there. But presumably not in the winter. I imagine it's like ten foot of snow, and really not a lot happening. Sure. I don't know what they're researching, they could be, it could be, uh, 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 astronomy, as I say, it could be some sort of seismic thing, it could be just testing polar melting, it could be, it could be penguins, I, I've no idea. I haven't got the information. Uh, I, I don't think I wanted us to go into what they're doing. <laughs> they, they already know, yeah. They probably want to know what's happening in the world for, oh. Well, we, we've got the man here. That's an interminable five minutes for them. They've already, we've already wasted that five minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're gonna put it on excited to hear from you, and they've just got five minutes of us discussing on, what though, they might be doing. What I'm worried about is this bit, so for these, for these ten people there, we've just annoyed the two hundred listeners we've got. <laughs> Because they're thinking, what's in this for me? Well, we'll have fun along the way, and what I think we're doing, they, they've been stuck there, as I say, they're out of touch, they don't know what's happening, so Carl Pilkington is the man, um, uh, we're gonna have a break, we'll have a song, maybe some ad breaks, and then Carl is gonna let these scientists who are stuck away in the darkness know what's been happening for the last couple of weeks. Is that all right, Carl? Well, I, you know, I don't really follow the news, so oh, they probably know record. More. I was gonna say what's been going on. <laughs> <laughs> It is a glorious day, Steve. Brilliant. Every day's a glorious day, isn't it? Well, it is when I'm with you. Yeah, love the world. Yeah. Um, so these scientists, they're stuck away in the darkness. Um, let's tell them what they've been missing. What's the highlights, Carl, of the last, um, Ricky Gervais and Steve Merchant and Carl Pilton, by the way, XFM 104.9, um, etc. What's, what have they missed for the last, uh, just, just, just do the last few weeks. What have they missed? Remember, they haven't got newspapers, they haven't got telly. What, what's the- look at him, he's looking at me like I just said that in Arabic. <laughs> what, what do you understand? Think what, what's happened. Think what they haven't got that you know about. What have you seen and heard in the last couple of weeks that they couldn't have? Well, like on, on the news and that, what's, what's gone on in the world and that. Y yeah. Uh. Well, or just things you've done personally, I think that'll be of less interest. Yeah. Pope's dead. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, li I like it. I imagine that. Imagine if that wasn't breaking it to them. <laughs> yeah. That like they're listening and they go, what's happened? Pope, the Pope's dead. <laughs> well, they'd say, like, they'd break it to us gently, Carl. Well, I think that's better than how they do it on the news normally, though, isn't it? They make what? a big deal out of it and it pa you panic a bit when it's just breaking news and you think, oh, there's a war on. Yeah. And you go, Pope's dead and you go, well. So you've just used that short, sharp tactic. Who, oh, yeah. Softly, like, really, I, I, just quickly. It, I just said it softly, no. Pope's dead. <laughs> Mm. When you were, you know all that coverage of the Pope with like those millions of people that had gathered in, you know, in Rome and stuff. Mm. I was thinking about, you remember we talked about the Queen Mother, mm. and they were queuing up, queuing up, queuing up to see the Pope. Yeah, the like state. four hours and to get a glimpse. And once again, I couldn't help but feel if they popped him on some kind of like dessert trolley and just wheeled him past <laughs> everyone else, they could have got that done in about three quarters of an hour. Yeah. You know, once again, people not thinking, they're not expanding their minds. So you're yeah. like me. What, like students and ragweed exactly. with a, with put a bed it, down on the street? Put on one of those novelty beds, they're all dressed in kind of cardinal's gear. Yeah. 
just, you know, trundling them off and down the, yes. Well, it's, the way, it's, it's the way they also said they've now got a new pope. He's hardly new, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't they learn from the last one? Sure. You're taking on old people. Yeah, yeah. My dad couldn't even get a gig in being cute. <laughs> 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 So, who have we offended? I, I mean, it, 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 the thing is, it's like, because soon our offensiveness isn't going to be sort of like we're feeling about, about offending someone. It's going to be like we're going to be living with Sam and Rushdie. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The things, I mean, that, that that's, that's pretty, you know, don't, don't have a go no, at the Pope, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not having a go at him. It's good yeah. that he can carry on working and what have you, but I thought everyone <laughs> had to retire at like 60 or whatever. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. But, you know, whatever, if, if you can get away with it. Yeah, yeah. why couldn't your dad get a, uh, a gig in B&Q? I mean, he goes there a lot, doesn't he? He goes there a lot! That's why, <laughs> if you're just joining us, joining us for this one-off show because you're trapped in a bunker somewhere in the Antarctic, you should know this of Carl's dad. He's a thief. He steals things, yeah. and we've, we've openly discussed this before. He steals this from other elderly ladies and elderly people. Perhaps oh, he's not like raffles, area. though. He doesn't go into their house. He's not a gentleman thief. No, it's, what's it, 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 don't people put, let's put this in context. You know, he's not, he's not a villain, but sometimes when people leave groceries lying around in a public telephone box. No, what it was, where they live now, they've retired, right? They've moved. I won't say where they are, but somewhere quiet, right? And it's so quiet- <laughs> It's not a witness re- uh, relocation <laughs> yeah, <a witness> <laughs> protection scheme. <laughs> but because, because there's only about eight people living in this village, it's not worth, like, the, 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 the like, corner shop. There's only open. eight people living it's, in the it's village? A, it's quiet. The it village quiet. of the damned. So, uh, <laughs> So anyway, so rather than keep the shop open, you meant to call up and go, all right, Harry, uh, I need some milk today. Right. And they stick it in a phone box outside in the shop, and my dad found that out. <coughs> so when he's been out, just stop off at the phone box, have a look mm. at what's, what's left lying around. Yeah. But of the eight, I mean, there's eight people in the village, <laughs> my attention would be instantly drawn to the dodgy mank fella. Mm. I mean, I, I, do you know what I mean? It seems, in Manchester you can probably get away with this, there's a lot of scum up there, but down mm. in this little village, you know, you've got a little Miss Marple type and a little, you know, country policeman. He's, he's stopped doing it now, Has he? he? Stopped doing it, yeah. Cleaned up his act. Yeah. 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 Good, alright, so with the Pope's dead, any other big news? Um, there was that, uh, that thing I told you about last week, the foot long spider eats chicken. <laughs> uh, <laughs> They're gonna think that the world's been taken over by them. It's not like they never did it. We're not going back. There's a foot long spider on the loose. Are these people bright though? You, well, let's have a look. Antarctic scientists. Yeah, yeah, they've probably got an O level or two. They're looking at penguins all day. Yeah. I, so how bright have you got to be? What do you mean? Well, what are they doing? Well, I don't know, do I? But they've been chosen. This probably cost millions of pounds to set them up there. They're pro- yeah, they're, they're pro- oh, Carl. This, I'd say this is like, for scientists, this is like Big Brother. <laughs> you know I mean? This is like a big dinner scientist here, watching yeah. this, finding it's out what's gonna go on, there's little challenges that they give them, little times. It's like Celebrity Love Island without the sun and slappers. Mm. Go on. I think, what else? What else has gone on? Well, while you're thinking, Carl, I should just tell you, now, you threw that question out earlier, um, why are ginger people historically mocked? Mm-hmm. We've had a couple of responses on the text, 83XFM. I, again, as ever with XFM listeners, don't believe what they say, don't trust what they say. But no. one of them, um... Have we got any respect for anyone in the world? Um, <laughs> get back to you. Uh, Pete in Tooting, now, again, I think this is nonsense, he claims that the reason ginger people are disliked is because Judas was ginger from the Bible. How- I don't know where he's come up with this idea. No, um, I've heard that. But sh- I mean, are there a great many people from, you know, the Middle East who are ginger? Well, that's probably why he stood out. Sure. And he's pro- he was probably fed up and he thought, I'll get him back. Yeah. Maybe- Unless he was wearing- unless he <laughs> had his hair dyed ginger when he was on the witness protection scheme. <laughs> what did he do? Which he had to go into what, after what, it all came out in the book. What did he do? What's- what did he do? He, he, stitched, up, he stitched him up, didn't he, to the Romans, didn't he, Judas? Didn't he do it for 40 pieces of silver or something? I'm, I'm not big on the Bible, but apparently, um... Incidentally, if you'd like us to, uh, stitch up any kind of messiahs for 40 pieces <laughs> of silver, just get in touch, 83XFM, uh, we're willing to do that for you as well. Um, but, so that's, so that's one, one explanation. There's another one here which is, uh, again, I don't believe this for a moment. It says here, ginger people get a lot of stick, because in, El- in Elizabethan times, people with ginger hair were told that their mother had slept with the devil. 
and that was why their hair was their hair was ginger. So there's two options. Maybe if you've got some more, you can uh, any more spurious thoughts, then get in touch. Uh, 83XFM. But yeah, I don't know. So, no, 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 there might be truth of both of those. I mean, the tr the point is that if only those are true, they will already be picked on. If you know what I mean. Right. That's the point. Mm. It, it's mm. sort of like I, I, maybe that's not the the the, uh, the total root of it. Well, the Judas thing might be the root of it. The first big um, ginger to. Uh, do some uh, uh, a little bit. So if off. he was bald, then old bald people would be like, "Yeah, get our time on that." Yeah. Well, we do mock you behind your back anyway, Carl. That, yeah. That's going on. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, t t play a record and think of something that's happened to tell these poor scientists what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. All you've come up with so far is the Pope's dead and there's a big spider. What is that? that eats chicken. <laughs> Pogues, rainy night in Soho. Uh, I hope I hope there isn't a rainy night in Soho tonight, Rick. Right. You're one of those uh, who agrees with me. <laughs> so we just had a, uh, an email here from a guy called James Lee. He says, uh, hi, just writing a bit of info on the scientists in Antarctica. I'm a scientist who's just come back from one of the Antarctic bases called Halley, uh, or Haley. There are 15 people staying there over the Antarctic winter. The scientists are looking mainly at the atmosphere, things like the ozone hole and meteorology. Right. I think there are six scientists staying over the winter, as well as a doctor, electrician, mechanic, and a carpenter and so on and so he's saying uh, they do listen they can they have the internet so they maybe could listen uh, to the show on the internet and uh, if you get the chance say hi to francis and the rest of the winter is for me sure no problem yeah thanks james um but yeah there they are that's what they're doing that's what they're up to but, but why why are they asking you for a message though when i mean have, have these people got families and that or are they convicts or <laughs> 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 no which of course they got but they probably do get messages from their family <laughs> well, what, why are you doing one for one? Is that, I mean, say, do you know, like, you see it in, like, porridge and stuff like that, where if someone's in prison and no one visits them, yeah. and they sort of look a bit fed up on that, is this message that you're doing for, for like, people who d don't get a letter in the post from... Brilliant. So they, they, they put this on the shelf until someone doesn't get one. All right, Hargreaves? Yes, sir, I didn't get a message today, sir. <laughs> you have got a message, Hargreaves. I've what, sir? Hargreaves, you have got a message. Really, sir? From Ricky Gervais. <laughs> really, sir? And then I give it- Don't talk. <sighs> Don't talk. Please, there are scientists listening. Try to d keep the talking shit down to a minimum today. Well, what's annoying me is it, right? They, they're saying they stuck over there for months, but it yes. seems to me like they're wasting a lot of time. Right? Why? Well, you're saying they probably watch DVDs. They're saying they've got internet access. Yeah. Yeah? They're well, I'm wrong. To, listening to messages. Yeah. Get the job done and go home. Well, that's so, well, then we don't have to tell them anything then, because they, they listen to the internet. They've got, if they've got the internet, then, yeah, it's a waste of time. Good point. Play a record. Well, hang on, before that, here's a good point. You've had long time to research what's been going on in the world. We just had an email here from Nicholas who says, why haven't you told them about the recent pig Olympics that just went on in China? You've missed that one, Carl, once again. Who won? <laughs> <laughs> First of the game to die, Morrissey, XFM 104.9, and Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Well, Carl, you failed miserably. The scientists stuck away. Right, one more chance. What What's happened in the last couple of weeks? Just one more chance to... What have you seen in the last couple of weeks? Uh, well, like I said, I don't, I don't really watch the news and that, so... Right. I can't, uh, tell them about that. But in a way, I think they're better off not knowing... I think that's the only good thing about being out there, isn't it? Not knowing about the bad stuff going on. Yeah. So, I can't help them there. They don't need to look at the weather, do they? No, don't you know. Uh, but, uh, I'll tell you about the Pope and that. Yeah, he's mm. pretty extensive. What about uh, the, uh, the EU constitution and the, uh, the no votes? What, uh, what do you make of that? Uh, what are your views? What, what's the problem there? Oh. This, this isn't, this no, isn't, better, this isn't broadcasting now, is it? Knowing. This is nothing. Come up with something. Well, the talk. Fat, the fat baby then, the fat baby that they found, that was on the telly. Right. Well, what was that? It's just a little fat baby. That, uh, uh, oh, for f I don't know what, it's just a, just a little fat kid and that. What? Tell what? It what was is on the telly, it was on the telly and but that. But what was it? on the telly? You just said fat baby, fat baby, fat baby, fat baby on telly, fat baby on telly. Do you meant to be telling them what's happened in the world? Tell, well, tell me about the fat baby on telly. It's just they've found some, uh, 
there's, there's this illness called Momo, right? And, uh, they've just got this, this woman had a kid. It's really sad. It was on Channel 4 and that, right? And, uh, kids born. You sure it wasn't Jimmy Carr? Kids born and that, right? Momo? It's called Momo, Isn't that yeah. that Black Music Award? No, no, right, little, little fat baby and that. And, uh, there's only three of them in the world. These little fat babies. Right. And, uh, so one they're, they're well, how fat? Are you not telling me what do you mean? How fat are they? Six stone it was, it was only two. And uh, th there's, there's three of them in the world and there was this one and there was one in Brazil. Are they like and, uh, endangered? Is that the problem? Because <laughs> there's only three of them in the world. I don't I'll be worried, is it like a conservation campaign? They're hunted for their flesh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really sad. <laughs> if you I know, uh, it's easy to see. But, but, you, but you, if you've seen it, you'd go, it's a bit, bit sad than that. Um, well, I haven't seen it and I know nothing about it. Well, I've told you, there's three of them in the world. I d- I st- uh, okay, what else was on telly? Uh, the, uh, something I watched the other night, that was good. Uh, again, you know how I learn stuff from the, from the telly, I don't watch the news. Yeah, well, you don't out. learn stuff yeah, on the telly, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you, you what, though. You told us there's a fat baby well, in for, the world. Forget about them there's in- There's a spider, in, a spider eats chickens and there was a fat kid, that's- forget, all right, forget them in Iceland, right? Yeah. We'll, we'll give them rockbusters later to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but what's her name? I'll tell you what is interesting, Steve. Um, I didn't know that much about it. O autism. Okay. Oh, good. It's just some more entertaining stuff on XFM 104.9. No, no. It's to cheer up people. Go on, and what? What? Come on. No, right. Have you heard about it, Steve? What autism. It, is? Right, it autism. scares me to death when he comes up, when he touches on a serious subject. It, uh, we've been talking about wheeling a dead pope round, the Chinese don't age well, and ginger people are hated, and now we're going to touch on a really, I mean, no, I uh, uh, my heart's in my throat. Go yeah, on, Carl, then. Tell me, tell me your insights to autism. Right, well, it, there's this, it, again, Channel 4 coming up with some good stuff at the moment, right? It might have been Channel 5. <laughs> um, <laughs> But what's the name? It was- It's the attention span that I like! Ah. It's these- these people who, uh, they've got, got like this autism thing going on. Yeah. And, uh, they sort of take in a lot of information, they get sort of a bit- they get so into it that they know everything about that subject and what have you, right? And there was this lad who, uh, he knew everything, right, about EastEnders. Right. He sort of- the, the cameraman was saying to him, uh, so, you know, why, why he standards on that? I said, oh, I don't know, I just like it. And he said, uh, I remember when I first watched it, it was a Thursday, it was five to eight, Pauline Fowler walked in, she had a pink jumper on, she said, all right, love. And he remembers everything from that moment on. Yeah. Right, and everything. Which is great, but then, the way the programme was making out, it was almost like they were saying it's, it's a disability. <laughs> right. When in a way, it's more like a superpower. Sure. Like, like Rain Man. <laughs> but if you, if you, if you can take it's Rain Man. No, I'm he not. has special autistic powers. <laughs> oh God! We were sent. We were sent for Rain Man. I don't know what to do. So I don't you know mean, what to so do. So he would be a great autistic mastermind. So of autistic so it, mastermind. He'd well, be what I'm like, saying is, don't be watching EastEnders though. Sort of. Why didn't they give him an encyclopedia and say, get into that? Sure. That'll be useful. Yeah. Keep him away from EastEnders. He's wasting his time there. But I don't think it's a. It is a disability. No. Yeah, well, there, there are other things, and they're, they're not. Uh, it's, it's also autism is a matter of degrees. From what I know, uh, and I'm sorry to have to do this, but I feel that I have to at least be the voice of reason, as as ill-educated as I am on the subject. But I think one, there's degrees of autism. I think some are higher performance than others. There's other there's other issues with it. It's not they just they just got good memories. They don't go around doing tricks for people because they can remember stuff. There are other there are other issues with it. Do you know what I mean? Right, well, I mean, they did, they seemed a bit- But you watched the program! What did you learn? That he knows when Pauline Fowler came in! Yeah, I mean, there was other bits where they couldn't control their emotions and stuff. Oh! But, but that but, other- that other little bit, yeah. But the main- the main bit of it was he can soak up information and stuff, and I'm just saying it didn't seem really bad. Do you know what I mean? There's disabilities where people say that's a bad disability. Go it's on. like how people say about, uh, this is brilliant. Know. This is just like uh, I, I. This is amazing to be in a room with this man. It's incredible. You just wind him up and listen to what comes out. And no, I'm, I'm going to sit back it's now. It's I'm not going to even. I'm not going to defend you no, no. or explain anything. Just tell me. Go on and tell me about the other disabilities no, what, that are worse. What, what, no, what I mean is how people c can sometimes easily get mixed up. Um, how people are scared of like a cyclop. <laughs> when at the end of the day, he's got a disability. I bloke. I bloke. Who's scared of a cyclop? 
No, it's Apart just from Jason and his Argonauts. <laughs> where have you, where, where's this Cyclop that you're scared of? No, I'm just saying in history and in boxing that no, 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 not in history. Hi history happened. Yeah. But what are you thinking of? You're, you're mixing history with Greek mythology and Roman mythology and every other type of mythology. Well, what do you mean? There wasn't really a giant cyclop that went round picking up ships and throwing them around. That's not history, Carl. Do you think Batman's history? <laughs> no, but this was, it was ages ago, wasn't it, when we were sort of No, I'm not saying from... it didn't happen ages ago. I'm saying it didn't happen. Well, it might have done. It's not, I mean, what's so ridiculous about a fellow with one eye? In the middle of his head, and he's big and scary, and lives in a cave. Why is he scary? Because he's got. What, if he had eight eyes, I'd be scared of him. <laughs> At the end of the day, he's got a disability. Oh, oh, we'll talk about it in a bit. <laughs> Bobby Womack, across 110th Street, on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Stephen Merchant. And over there, Carl Pilkington. Can I just remind people that- A man so stupid, it isn't actually offensive. Mm. I just want to put that out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, no, I just wanted to remind people that they can get in touch, uh, on the text, <laughs> 83XFM. You'll need that, uh, text number shortly because we're going to be playing Rockbusters very soon. Um, Gav has texted it, texted in, and he says quite simply, What's happened to the webcam? All I can see is a bold monkey. <laughs> um, well. You're absolutely right, we'll try and get that sorted out for you. But, uh, we're rock- we're rock bustering now. Should we do it now? Should we do it now? Say it up now. Okay, great. Yeah. So we'll just- You should just remind people, Rick, for, uh, particularly if they're trapped in Antarctica for the next- Well- That's what this game is. Well, this is, um, uh, um, blockbusters, um, just totally ripped off and, um, the clues are bands and artists. Um, they- Carl says they're cryptic clues, they're not cryptic clues, they're more like what word am I thinking of. They're tenuous, um, some of them don't work at all. Mm. Um, so it's- it's really are you in tune with a shaved monkey? I mean, it's nearly embarrassing to get the clue. I pride myself on that I don't really get them. And I- and I'm- I'm sort of proud of that. Cause you shouldn't. Yeah. But anyway, I've, I think I've given it a- a big sell. Yeah. Now, you do win tap today, but the big prize is going forward to be in the draw in, um, five weeks time when there's a- a signed, uh, Homer that I uh, got Matt, uh, Graining to draw. If you go to rickygervais.com, you can see him drawing it. It's an original- Well, uh, if they want to see it, they can go to xfm.co.uk slash ricky and it's actually- just click on it, you can have a look at it. Oh, you can see all the pictures there, can't you? There's also a signed, um, Nigel Tufnell. Um, poster, uh, and, uh, us three as, um, flanimals. But there's a little, actually, video clip, uh, as on rickysarrays.com, oh, right, yeah, yeah. you can actually see Matt Groening, um, uh, drawing it. Well, so those, those prizes are the ones, that, the big prizes you can win in five weeks' time when you, if you get to the grand final. In the meantime, uh, it's the usual selection of mediocre gifts which will be given away. That you've found in a draw that people have sent us yeah, to give so away. Yeah, first up, we've got, uh, the, um, I think, J well, I think most people agree, the mediocre John Travolta film Ladder 49, which I think right. barely made it into cinemas over here. No. Uh, we've also Ooh, got on DVD. That, what were you, and we're giving that away. We're giving that away. Brilliant. On DVD, uh, oh. the TV series Grumpy Old Men, which I think is repeated every single night on BBC Two. Oh! And, uh, and, and, and and that's free as well, is it? Yeah, oh, that's free. Oh, well. okay. That's free well. right. uh, we've got the complete third series of Alias. Great gift, um, only if you've seen the previous two seasons. So, um, <laughs> is that the one I'm in? Mean? I don't know. Possibly. Uh, French and Saunders at the movies, a collection mm. of all their hilarious movie mm. spoofs. Um, again, on television, I think every Friday, and uh, the TV series Operation Good Guys. You know, fine series, but you could see that on UK Gold most nights. So, so um, once again, an excellent. But selection. if you win all those and take them straight down to Record and Tape Exchange, you will be able to get two albums that you actually like. That's exactly right. So. Well, People send us then, so they sort of get bigged up on the radio. So that's done. We don't need to, <laughs> need to worry about that. <laughs> Angry. So uh, anyway, then three three clues. Well, hang on, let's play the jingle. No, I've got one. Have you not got a jingle for Rockbusters? No, oh, do one quickly now. Okay. Uh, uh, Rockbusters. Brilliant. All right. So we've got we've got three of them. Uh, cryptic clue and the initials. The band. It could be a band or an artist. We've done all that, haven't we? Yeah. All right. First one. Uh, the fella oh, for f let his wife know how he got the bruise on his leg. Right? Give us that again. The fella let his wife know how he, how he got the bruise on the leg. He got a little bruise. Yeah, hey, it's, it's all, all imagine that in the Times crossword. You read it again, it's slightly different. Every time I look back at this crossword, it's slightly different. All the words change. The it initials, can't be cryptic. The initials there, C L. Right? C L. Fella got a bruise on his leg. He let his wife know how he got it. What's going on? Right, second <laughs> one. Yeah. All the muttering! And Se what's the next, uh, cryptic clue? <laughs> Second one. That, uh, that Potter lad 
had uh, a lot of bottle doing all that stuff with the wizards and that, right? He had a lot of bottle playing with the wizards and that. What's, what's all that about? <laughs> right? T it was like, what's all that about? TB there. Band or artist, the initials TB. That Potter lad, he's got a lot of bottle doing all that stuff with the wizards. Right? And the, uh, the third one, uh, the Buddhists won't be able to get in their temple without these. Oh. What, what do they need, right? The mm. Buddhists won't be able to get in their temple without these. The initials TM. Right. 83936 is the text number. Um, we don't want to receive emails from this because we can't be bothered, so just a quick text. Yeah. Make sure you include uh, all three answers. We're not interested unless you've only got, you, need, you need to get all three. Yeah. But, but the winner may only get two, but oh, it's, the fir it's the first one with the most right answers. Yeah. Uh, and if you wins all those all those DVDs, hey, this is a box set. To be fair, that's pretty that's pretty good prize. That oh, one. Oh, you could probably get you could get two, uh, two two CDs when you take that down to record tape exchange. And, and you don't need to see the first two seasons because you won't know what's happening anyway. Oh, okay, fine. Um, I'm excited to think that there's um, some people now in uh, Antarctica just scrabbling around to get a pen, yeah. just trying to figure them out. You know, and that'll, that'll keep they'll, they'll probably uh, stew on that for the next <laughs> two months. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Gorilla Inc. Gorillas, Gorillas on XFM 104.9 on Ricky Gervais with the uh, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Mm. Carl, okay, we've got to sort this out. We didn't meet again this week, and this is a shoddy show. I thought we had a sort of framework for it, but um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, I uh, thought be, you know Carl could sort of tell him what was going on. He doesn't know anything except watching telly. Late night telly on st strange channels, like he gets all his information uh, about the news on Anna Nova, and I mean, I, I even tried to help him because um, Monkey News last week was awful. It wasn't Monkey I mean, News. It wasn't Monkey News. It was I, I, I can't remember. It. On, I've been away on holiday. Brilliant. Yeah, and the, the Monkey News stops. Uh, um, I, I phoned him up that on there was a, there was a front cover. Um, of the, I think it was the Telegraph one day this week, and um, it was an ironic story. It was a fluff piece, but it was a funny story. It was about a um, a monkey in a uh, in a zoo that had had a a, a a ruck with its father because it's adolescent. It was like the equivalent of like sixteen to eighteen, and it had a fight with its father, and it escaped. It ran away, and it was like you know an interesting story. Yeah. I phoned Carl up and said, "It's a monkey news. Um, a monkey has escaped from its cage after an argument with its father." And he said, what was the argument about? <laughs> I mean, he thinks like Homer Simpson. Yeah. Amazing. What was the argument about? Like, the zookeepers are going, oh, look, oh no, he's brought up his untidy room again. The father, oh, look, he's caught him smoking again. I mean, what do you mean, what was the argument about? They have fights. They have fights and then it ran away. His dad wanted him to go to college, but he just wants to quit and get a job. <laughs> yeah. And he, he fancied a monkey in the other cage. And the father was saying, she's not good enough for you. Yeah. Oh, so what was it about? News today? Uh, yeah, I got a little bit of monkey news. You got a little bit of monkey news. Yeah. Well, you've redeemed yourself right. then this we, week. We've got some stuff there and that. Uh, what else has been going on? You were. Uh, what are we going to talk about now? So I got a lot of heads gone now. Your so heads got gone. Monkey news. Yeah. And, why uh, is your brain? Why is it? You, f you. It seems like since we've come back on air, you have become dimmer. I mean, it is extraordinary. It's like it's like BSC has kicked in. Or did really we just are. forget? We just forgot. Maybe what? it's been a long time. We've forgotten just how stupid he is. Yeah, uh, it's I proper. Do you mean it's pr it's the silences? You know, yeah. he forgets we're on the radio. There's just I know. Dead it's, air. it's unbelievable, and oh. it's it's our name uh, on I this. Know. They put a post. But oh, as I said before, you know, he is he is. Uh, 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 no offence, he's he's not a bright bright lad or educated or anything like that. Yeah, but well, some things he says uh, does border on the retarded. I've been trying to take in too much information though. That's that's the problem recently. Well, I said to you last week, I've been like reading more books, might have you, and trying to take in too much. But the problem is, like even even watching telly and that now. Suzanne said to me, you know, stop doing that. Stop watching telly late at night and going to bed, because it's it's making your brain too active. And I'm sort of heaven forbid. And I, you know, I'm trying to get to sleep and I can't. And then when I wake up, I'm th she, she had a go at me the other day, right? Because it was the night after watching the fat baby, right? Woke up in the morning, and uh, she had a go at me. Because as soon as I woke up, I said um, something like, "How can you freeze time?" <laughs> <laughs> and she says, "Are you going to say good morning or whatever?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to burst. Just imagine it, right? It's a, it's that like the sun comes up through the window. Oh, 
she's right. Carl's like that, his little head. He, his eyes opened, he goes, one of those floppy night hats. <laughs> How can you freeze time? Oh, God! But it's because, like, whatever, the night before I might have heard that on the news or whatever, and it's just been sort of whizzing round my head. Sure. Um, you know, <laughs> it was a big debate. I think they found, <laughs> have, they, have they found a way of doing it or something? What are you talking about? They've done something about freezing time and all that. Uh, see, this isn't information, this is nothing. That is nothing, that. They've done something about freezing time. Imagine Jeremy Paxman coming on, going, well, the issues tonight said something about freezing time. <laughs> it's, you're, you're, uh, think before you talk. No, but I, I don't worry about how to do it. I just think about what affects that. Oh, one. they haven't asked you to get involved. Well, this is what Phew. I'm saying, though. You Phew. can't explain it. It's a, it's a tough thing, isn't it? But what's the point of me worrying about It's not about a question. That? Do you know what he said to me the other day? Uh, this is unbelievable. This is one of the most stupid, incredible things I've ever heard. He was talking, and he suddenly stopped, and he was thinking about it, and he went, oh, I don't know what, he went, you'd never see a black ghost. Extraordinary. True, though, isn't it? I've never seen any ghosts, full stop. There are no ghosts. There aren't ghosts. No, but I mean when you just see them in, like, magazines and that. <laughs> <laughs> Play a record! <laughs> Oh, there's someone who take care of me. When Anthony and the Johnsons. Mm. Isn't that beautiful? Interesting. Hope there's someone on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Well, Carl, um, more, uh, revelation. Um, we were talking about it last week, but Carl brought it up again, just now. Uh, didn't want to go to the doctors, didn't want to have a full sort of body checkup that may save his life because he saw on the website they do a, a, a test where they have to insert a finger in his ass. Well, don't tell me about it. Why? Don't put it on the website. Just put, we look at your heart. Yeah. We check your blood pressure out. Yeah. And then they, they could just do it quickly. You could just sort of say, right. Um, How can they do it quickly? No, but what I'm saying is it's, it's worse than it going in there. Knowing that, I mean, they've got it on the website, so you, you're on the journey on the bus, thinking in about twenty minutes I'm gonna have a finger up my arm. But they're doctors. Yeah, but just they're not doing it for a laugh. They're not filming it with a two-way screen. Mm -hmm. They're not putting on boxing gloves so it hurts more. They're <coughs> up. Oh, it's I prostate. Right, out again. Out again. I'm just saying, in the, 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 the day, the sort of. Do you think they're in the pub going? Here he comes. It's Pilton, I have my finger up his ass today. <laughs> Do what? they allow ladies to do that? Do they allow female doctors to of do it? Of course they do. They're doctors. No, that's, that's worse. Though. You're sounding. You're sounding like him. No, I'm just interested in because you know. Do they allow female doctors to do the finger up the arse thing? Of, well, of course they do. They're doctors. Forget the female and male. They are doctors. Right. Do you know any female doctors to do that? <laughs> but what I mean is, I, isn't it a bit like if you're being searched at an airport? You know, and you're a woman. They send in a woman person to search you. They don't. They don't send in a bloke to do it. Is that the same thing? Yeah, I mean, they, they probably trust someone who's gone through uh, six years medical college not to be taking the piss as opposed to a fat security guard who couldn't get anything else. Do you know what I mean? You're talking about there's doctors all the time coming out in the papers. Are oh, they gave them this so they could look at their boobs or whatever? Or, you know, it's all well, like you're always hearing stuff about dodgy doctors. But what I'm saying is the reason why they do that security because there's there's lots of security people and they can you know for your own you know for the, the you know um, your own modesty. They there's a female one to search females and a male one to search males and that's fine. But th there's not like four or five GPs to choose from and you go in there and you go, is it, is it your arse and testicles? Do you want a bloke or it, you know, what it, you, you accept it. long fingernails? They don't have long fingernails. What do you think of this, this female GP looks like? She's sitting behind the desk like Cruella de Vil with a, with a, with cleavage and long red false nails going, hello love, bend over, this may hurt a little bit. There, they, there's, there's gloves and Vaseline, you, it, it, I mean, uh, they I'm, I don't believe oh, there's two of you now in the room. Carl, they're doctors. They have to, they, uh, what would you rather do than put the hand down your throat and round your elementary canal to feel your ass? It's a quicker way in. You seem to know a lot about these doctors and stuff because of people's asses. You're a very well informed gentleman. What about this sort of thing? <laughs> well, say, say if they did find something. Um, yeah. Would you then have to get like a second opinion so someone else's no. finger? No. Well, no. They, they test it to see if there's anything suspicious. That it's usually uh, a, a, a swollen prostate, which which can be anything. Um, so they, you know they catch it early, and that's it. They fit. They feel up there. But if you got a second opinion, then the same doctor will just stick a thumb up and have a feel around there. <laughs> so it always works in the same way. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if there's you know if there's a doctor who can, I don't know, put me at ease. 
I mean, surely there's another way around it. I don't believe that. I mean, what is this? Sixty million people or something in the world, isn't there? Sixty billion or uh, something? Well, six billion. Something. Yes, you got it. Right. You hit it. Well done. That's good work. Right. So yeah, there's this six. What? Six billion? Did I say? Yeah. What's six billion then? Loads, isn't it? Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> so if you want, you want a doctor to come up to assure you that the finger at the bum thing is not painful and that it's necessary. And just that, that it's, it's not necessary. Just, really. it's just that it's not an easy way around. All right. What's you know the what phone number here? It's uh. Changed, haven't they? Oh, for fuck. Oh, You're the producer! Hang on, here it is, here it is. 0871 222 1049, and I think you, you select option one. It tells you anyway what to do. Please, if, if, if you're a GP, or, or if, you know, even if you've completed medical, I mean, we, we want a qualified doctor, really. Anything else is not good enough for Carl Bilkington. Um, just to. to uh, we'd love to. You can ask him all the other questions, because you know, Carl. As I said last week, he he, he doesn't f um, feel his own testicles because he doesn't like the feel. Yeah. So you know, I'd like a doctor to explain to him uh, how necessary well, I, that I, is. And this is truthful as well. I've got a very slight pain around the genital area at the moment, and I'm not. I think it might be some kind of groin strain, but I'm a little bit anxious. Not entirely sure. Yeah. What I it is, feel, so. I, I'm. I, 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 you've been with me twice when I've gone along to get them checked. Yeah. I go, oh, what's that? Yeah. yeah. It's terrible. I mean, but, you know, it's usually- you, you, you're- I think you're in a pretty low risk, Eric, aren't you? I'd hope so. You're coming out of the twenties. I think it's a- I think testicular sort of- I shouldn't be doing this, I'm not qualified. No. Uh, they, they told- what, all they said was to me is sort of like, it's twenties and fifties. Mine- So, like, we're in- <laughs> Mine sort of felt like they dropped a bit the other week when I was on holiday. I don't know if that's- like when you're relaxing or I was wearing <laughs> shorts a lot. How far? If it's two foot, it's too far. I was having problems walking. <laughs> What do you mean? Well, Why? It, it was just a bit, sort of, a bit- I, I had shorts on all day, I'm happy, I'm walking about on the beach, what have you. Mm. And then, at the night, when I put some long trousers on, I, I was sort of walking like well, they probably, rickets. They probably, like, stretch a little bit. Sometimes, uh, I, I told you, when I was about 18, I was scared. I, I, I went to, uh, the doctor, I, I felt a pain, right? And, uh, I was- because I was doing biology, I thought I'd show off this doctor. I said, I've got a pain, I think it feels like it starts in the epididymis and goes up to the, through the urethra, either. And, uh, he went- <sighs> Finger up the half. He said, your jeans are too tight, they're squashing your balls. <laughs> so, uh, we want a doctor like that. So, what's the phone number again? It's, uh, 0871. <laughs> Two 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 one zero four nine. A qualified. What, what do you mean the balls drop though? We've got to come back to this. I don't know. They just felt like uh, it's not too bad at the moment. I was all right on the way in, but it was I, just, I, felt, I feel twinges all the time. But you never know whether it's just, it's just because they're in. But they felt like they weren't my own. Do you know what I mean? It, they sort of felt a bit like these. Were there wasn't the a bloke standing really close to you, was there? No, you didn't get them mixed up just <laughs> on the way back. <laughs> on the flight back. <laughs> so Someone no, else. Has got do, well, do take a um, leaf out of nudist books. They just walk around. They've they yeah, got nothing on it. About nudists. Why? Well, let's- let's play this ad break and that and- Have you had another encounter? Mm, uh, if we've got time, I'll tell you about it. Have you really? Oh. Right, we've got, uh, 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 who's that on the line? It's Rob. Rob, and, uh, are you a doctor? I'm a final year medical student. I'll be a doctor in two months, Touchwood. That's close enough, isn't it? Yeah. Excellent. So, um, uh, wh where do you study? Do you want to give uh, more details or do you want to remain anonymous I as you're calling to talk to? Hospital. All right, great. So, um, why do uh, GPs uh, sometimes put uh, their finger up um, a man's anus? To see what's there. Yeah, you know, if you've got hemorrhoids, if you've got an enlarged prostate, you know, it's either that or they stick up a big tube and have a look up with a light. What? And it's easier to do that. Now, uh, are you, um, dumbing this down for us or are you gonna foul your medical exams by saying stick up a big tube with a light? I I'm dumbing it down. Okay, come on then. We're all intelligent people here, uh, and Carl. So you can you tell us what- now what's that called? It's called a sigmoid escape. Right. Nice. That was I a clever test, wasn't it, Rick? 12 inch a long, yeah. 12 inch long tube. I can put up there. So, Carl, would you prefer that or a finger? Well, so do they do they sort of do the finger first, and then? I mean, at, at what point do they say, "Hang on, we need a light here"? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's normally if there's something wrong. But so so if I go then, say if I go to this well-known clinic, right, and yeah. uh, they go, "Yeah, the art's good and that, yeah." Uh, finger, yeah. there you go, and then they go, hang on, I'm, I'm gonna go and get me light and tube. I'd, I, you know, I could start worrying them because they've sort of found something. And then, 
they're not likely to go straight in with the chair. They'll they'll probably send you off some tests first. Well, Carl, there's oh, nothing. Well, right. you go to these places to, to to put your mind at rest and to know where you are uh, with your health. I mean, it, it's not that you go along. That's that's what most people worry about. They think that because I'll go along and they'll find something. Well, one, there's, that, that, that's that's illogical. There's no, there's, it doesn't heighten the fact they find something because you go along. And two, if they do find something, it's a good job you went along. I mean, I'm a hypocrite because I don't go to the doctor, but uh, uh, you know, it. it, it I, I've had that done. You had... should be concerned if, when they shine the little light in your ear, it comes out the other side of your ear. No, the other ear comes right out the other side. That's but, when you should be worried. But Rob, right? You said then, if they if they find something, they send me off for some tests. Why can't I just have the test without that and cut out the middleman? Do you know what I mean? Because you're wasting uh, lots of money. There's hundreds of tests they could do, and they could do every test, and they could all come back with nothing, or they could do the finger up there and send you for the three tests you need to find out what's wrong with you. But in this day and age, with all the technology and that, and like brainy doctors and all that, the only way to find out is sticking a finger up there. What are you worried about, Carl? Is it fundamentally that uh, this doctor who's, uh, uh, um, has done six years medical training, yeah, is, is, is it embarrassing to have a man's finger up your ass? I just don't understand how you can get round to that without- But what don't you action. like? Is it fundamentally you don't like anything up your ass, or is it, uh, is it the fact that it's a man's finger well, up there? I, I don't like going to the doctors, it makes me nervous, because I think if anyone searches you long enough they're gonna find a fault with you, right? <laughs> and especially if they're going that far into you, they're gonna find something, and- Probably not. Well, you know, I, I just, I just don't, I, I don't know how to get round to that sort of- that point where you get a, what what do you talk to the doctor about? He's like, all right, nice day. Uh, strap your trousers. He goes, I'm just gonna. He says, I'm gonna just um. Most uh, people just shut up and let you do it, and then breathe a sigh of relief when you say there's nothing there. Yeah, but I'm is that at the end of the test, or is that the first thing he does? It's the last thing. So that trousers up out the door. Because he knows it ends conversation. He knows it's a bit of a faux pas. The, you know, the doctor says, oh, I better not kick off with a finger up the arse. What I, what I do is I'll, uh, I'll start on with the, uh, you know, the head. And then we're going to go, oh, one final thing, Mr. Pilkerton. Um, so, so Rob- He, dro he drops his keys and he goes, pick them up. And as you bend over- Will, will you be doing this, Rob? Is this what you're, like, open to do? Um, you do all I'll, these- I'll have to do it at some point. All doctors do it at some point, no matter what they specialise in. So the first one, is he another doctor there to sort of make sure <laughs> no, he's doing it right? Not, not dentists. <laughs> no, but do you know- Dentists aren't doctors anyway. But do you know what I mean? Like, normally it's like a, a co-pilot will have someone with him for the first one. So when yeah. you when you put your first finger in- Yeah. Will someone be there going, right, you just want to move well, to the I've, left I've already it. done it. Have you? Yeah. Mm. So that's the thing with a student, you're learning. So you get people teaching and, and you learn on these things. Can I just point out, uh, Rob, I, I think I'm right in assuming that, uh, uh, you have a glove on. Yeah. And there's lubrication. Yeah. And it doesn't hurt. No. There you go. What well, are you worried about, Carl? who's this person who, who everyone's testing on in your class? <laughs> it's not one person! It's one person. There's like, when a patient comes in and they've got a problem, <laughs> your, your boss, the, like, consultant, he does his finger up, and if yeah, he finds something, he goes to the patient, is it alright if the student has a feel as well? Then well, the student what? puts on a glove, puts the leave on the glove, and sticks his finger up, and sees what he comes out with. <laughs> if, uh, Rob, I wish you could see Carl's face. I mean, he just, his face when you said, then he goes, says, uh, can this fella have a go as well? He looked horrified that it was, a, he thought it was a free-for-all, like there's a queue of people trying on gloves and going, let's have a go. That looks good up there. What have you found? No, but I mean, how come you had to sort of, is it not something you could test on yourself rather than waiting for other people to come in? <laughs> because then yeah, you know, because you're in an awkward can... position to get to you really, isn't it? <laughs> no, but you can have a good rummage then without feeling too awkward, but to, f to sort of have a go on, on your first patient when you don't really know what you're looking for anyway, do you know what I mean? Never really thought about it. Because you don't, if, if you've never done it before, you pop your finger in there, and you've got a sort of look. You've got to have an expression on your face, like you know what you what you're finding. Well, they can't see what you look. They can't see you your face. There. You got the the big boss consultant there going, and um, now move your finger there, and you'll probably feel this because he's just done it. He knows what's there. Well, what? what oh, so you're he's already had a go. He's yeah. had a feel, and he's going right. If you feel to the right, that's the conglomerate yeah. or whatever. Mm, the conglomerate, yeah. The, it's conglomerate is in perfect right, working well, order. Uh, well, that's, I'm still Thank you, Rob. That, thank you. I'm sorry you had to go to go through this. Um, Carl is probably the worst patient you'll ever encounter in your medical career. Good luck mm. with your finals and uh, and thanks very much. 
And uh, do you know any female doctors who do this? Or? Thank you, XFM 104.9. Thank you. It's the night time on XFM 104.9, uh, Steve Merchant, Ricky Gervais, Carl Pilkington, um, and, uh, what we- what- is- is it time? Is I it think- time? I think so. Yeah? Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news! Right then, so, uh, there's this monkey, right? Right. In Canada, it's in a zoo in, uh, Toronto, I think it is. Mm. Um, his name's Pascal, right? And, uh, what happened was, all the, the people in the zoo, uh, sort of said, you know, what can we do, uh, sort of spice the day up a bit. Yeah. So they left, Embellishing. Uh, no way this is a new let story. Let him do the news, let him yeah. do the news. Okay. So they, they Any left- Any dates? Just uh, let him read the news, or well, like, it would interrupt Moira Stewart. It was an out to me. No, cause she always says, today, <laughs> so you know it's news. She doesn't say, right, there was a monkey, right? right. right. Well, in well, Canada, right? right? Just finish okay. the news, it'll be alright. A couple of weeks ago, in this zoo in Canada. Right. Yeah. Um, Jesus. they got a camcorder. Right. And they said, let's, let's leave it for the, uh, for the monkey to have a, a play with, right? So, um, anyway, they, they passed w it around. One of BAFTA. And a couple of chimps and that were rubbish at it. They were like filming the floor and all that and the fingers were always in shot and stuff like that, right? But anyway, there was one, this, this one chimp called Pascal, right? Who, uh... Annoys me that he calls them monkeys though. He They're was, not monkeys, they're apes. He was, a, he was a dab hand at it, right? He was like, <laughs> uh, filming stuff, really good shots, you know, sort of nice mood and that. He used a light in properly and all the rest of it. <laughs> no, right? he didn't! Just let- this is the news, what are you talking about? This is the news. <laughs> is oh, so Steve, anyway. it's so annoying. You know it annoys me so much. <laughs> Things like that, he was a dab hand at it, he was doing really good shots. It really annoys me. Let's anyway, hear the anyway, news. Anyway, anyway, right, so he started, uh, at night, like when the zookeepers went home, he started filming like other monkeys on on the go, like, like whilst they were at it, right? And he was filming them and what have you. <coughs> the Ron Jeremy of I the zoo. It. You yeah. know it's gonna end up on the web. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the zookeepers came in the next day and it's like, let's see what shots he's got. Anyway, he's got all this like, you know, all these monkeys at it and what have you. So, oh yeah, um, this is uh, uh, honestly. So, I, you so, don't know what this is doing to me, Steve. So, Can I stop him now? So they thought, like, uh, actually, there's a few monkeys who who aren't at it enough. Do you know what I mean? They have problems, or what have you? So let's give them the videos. That is so it. untrue. This is so untrue. So, it's so untrue that it was filmed by a monkey. So it's what so happened untrue. Then, right? Rick, I don't know so, who to believe. <laughs> So oh God! Uh, you're talking so much shit again. So you must know that's not true. There's so no way. There's a load of tapes out. Look at me! Honest. Look at me! Don't keep talking. Look at me! Yeah. You must know that's not true. Can it's we just hear, hear the end of this news? You. you had a go at me last week because I didn't have the full story. I've got the full story. You're still not happy. There is no way mm. that b by chance one all this. Oh, what should we do? Let's give him a camcorder. That could happen. Yeah. He then films him at it. That might happen. It might happen, but I don't think he'd keep the camera still. Uh, 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 two, they go. Hold on, though. This is good. Still, this is good shit. This porn's good shit. Anyway, Look at so that. He's got, got a lovely shot. Yeah, yeah. So this is ridiculous. The, 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 let me just recap because I, I lost my way there. So the monkey has filmed the the monkey porn, yeah. and now he's they're showing it to the other monkeys. Is he directing? Can you hear him saying stuff? Can you go? It's like, just like you know, chimp pimp one, two, and three, and all the rest of it, right? Mm. But anyway, so they've got all these other tapes um, because what happened was um, they said he's quite good at this. Oh, and, and the animals, God. and the animals are uh, happy having him around because he's not a human. He's just one of the gang. Do you know sure. what I mean? So they started putting him in with other things like you know ostriches. Right. Uh, and talk shit. I, I, it was uh, so. And do you know they have a problem with pandas in in Japan. So yeah. they've they've sent him out there, filming uh, filming a bit. of- Where are you going? It's, you, you, honestly, you 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 really annoy me. There's Come no on, way this I, is happening. Can we it's just absolute. Hear the end? Why can't he just find a real story about a a a, a monkey? Let's hear I mean, the, the end. end. The end is he's really that he's, he's going to China. He's, he's filming the pandas and what. No, he's it. not. They wouldn't send a so, monkey director. No, they would not that. send okay, a pointless. monkey director. Pointless. Thunder Road by Bruce Springsteen, possibly. The greatest rock song of all time, I don't know. Well, big words. Big words indeed, but I, I, I echo them. Um, well, we're running out of time, we've got to get on with, uh, um, with the show, it's, uh, near the end. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I hope the scientists stuck in a big 
I don't know, hut in the middle of nowhere in pitch darkness, ten of them. Um, oh, I, I imagine they've been fascinated, Rick, by the finger up the ice discussion. We had Chinese the, uh, don't age well, gingers, pope. yeah, gingers, all that. Um, the big fat kid. Well, I see. Th th they're they're probably securing the knowledge that if they want to kill some time and it's dark, there's nothing better than stick your finger up someone else's yeah, ass. Exactly. So uh, enjoy that. But oh, uh, they, uh, they've been hanging on for rockbusters clues, I imagine. Mm -hmm. There's the answer. So uh, give us the clue again quickly. All right. So the first one was. Uh, the fella let his wife know how he, uh, got the bruise on his legs. Go on. Right? That was, that was, uh, Courtney Love. Yeah, Court, Court, Courtney Love. So that's Courtney Love. So that's, that's fine. That's the one, CL. So that one's fine. Uh, the second one, uh, that pot oh, what, what am I doing? Letting that one just go? Just let it go, just let it go. Am I just letting yeah. that go? Annoyingly, we haven't got time to take issue with that's, it, uh, Okay. That Potter lad, he, uh, he's got a lot of bottle, hasn't he? Doing all that stuff with the wizards and that. Go on. That's, uh, Brave Harry. Yeah, the bravery. Bravery, current sort of XFM band, the Bravery, Brave Harry, that works as well. No, it doesn't. And the last one. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't work. The Buddhists. It doesn't work. Won't be able to get in their temple without doesn't means. Doesn't work. Brave Harry. Brave Harry. Uh, doesn't uh, work. Brave Harry. The Buddhists, Brave Harry. Buddhists won't be able to get in their temple without these. TM. That's yeah. the monk keys. Right? So, who got all, who got all them, uh, The monk keys? Who got, who got all them, right? The, which band are called the monk keys? The monkeys. Oh, the monkeys. Yeah, the monkeys. Right, so, uh, who's, who's the winner this week? The winner this week is Gina. Well, we're we letting that go, yeah? Gina got them all right. Uh, I think her text said she was from Horrorstead. I don't know, I've never heard of that place, but uh, I assume that's right. But Gina, you win that selection. I can't believe she got them. I cannot believe she got them, but she goes, uh, wins those and also goes into the, the prize draw and we'll have, um, six people competing for that, uh, original Matt Groening thing. If you go to rickyjavase.com, you can see Matt actually doing that. We've got a signed Nigel Tufnell and uh, um, original drawing of us as flanimals. Um, I see what I see. XFM.co.uk slash Ricky. Yeah. Like, have a look at the picture. And, and uh, well, that's it. It's it's three o'clock. Right. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. More drivel next time. A shaven monkey. Yep. This mistake by the bravery on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington, yep. our producer. Right. An inverted commas heat put. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they, they know. They know. How are you doing, all right, Carl? Yeah. Didn't they also write something about me? Uh, bald round head. Yes, perfectly round little yeah. bald man head. They said so. Did you need to know that when you listen to the radio on that? <coughs> really matters what my hair's doing. Your hair, if you've, have you given it a little sh polish, because you look like a cue ball at the moment, and you've had a shave in it, I've never seen such a round head. It looks, it actually looks like a plate with ears. Yeah, well, for those that have never seen Carl, I, I actually, um, if you remember, I think he looks a little bit like, uh, Mr. Spoon from Button Moon. It, <laughs> he does! He so, does! does. If, you, if you've never seen that show, that's And just... also, he looks like, you know when they say, um, they find with a little four-foot human, and it's actually half a million years old, and they give it a name, and it's, got, it's the first, you know, Australopithecus into, uh, he looks like one of them as well. Perfect he round it all. He is the missing link. He looks half human, half monkey. Because he's got a slight slouch as well. So yeah, it's know, like yeah. those pictures where you see it going from an ape to a man. I he's know. Those are in the middle. Yeah, and he's, and of course his monkey hands, his hairy little wrist to those little, those skinny little things that you can get oranges out of holes with. And it's unbelievable. Why are you so all shaved and polished and everything? Got a wedding. <laughs> what? Got to go to a wedding today, so, uh, thought I'd, you know, clean myself up a bit. Yeah. Shouldn't you be wearing head. a suit or something? No, I'll go home and put some that on. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, Suzanne, uh, said, you know, make an effort. Uh, <coughs> sort of had a shave and that, and then she, I came out of the bathroom, she said, well, your head looks a bit sort of eggish. <laughs> <laughs> She's right. She always worries uh, about when I have a shave, cause I, I just, uh, you know That's I mean? your girlfriend, Carl. I know. But saying that. Yeah. Just think, so don't worry about Heat saying it. And the funny thing is, it's Boyd, Boyd Hilton, I think, of Heat that wrote it. And he's got a little bald head. Yeah, no, don't slag him off. Yeah, but on the end of his review, does it say, you know, written by <laughs> Baldy Boyd? No, because <laughs> it doesn't matter, it's a magazine. Don't worry about it. Looking forward to the wedding? Uh, uh, a bit boring, isn't it, but... <laughs> <you've gotta> be, <laughs> um... <laughs> They're probably listening! Should we do a shot? No, it'll be a great day for them, but I know what will happen. Suzanne will see, you know, all the fuss and that, and then she'll get ideas, and I'll have to let her down and all that. Why, mm. uh, why is it you don't want to get married again? I always forget. It's just... It, who's it for at the end of the day? I've been with Suzanne for eleven years, right? Sure. We're happy. Well, I, I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not the case. You're never happy. I am. I'm alright. 
Yeah, no, you're, I know you're happy with Suzanne and everything, but apart from that, you're never happy. You're, you are the most grumpy, moany thing in the world. I mean, I get annoyed, but I'm always happy. I was annoyed here, I was happy coming here, but there was a bloke behind me walking and scuffing his feet, he had a pair of those stupid skulls on, and he, he was clicking and scuffing. Wear some shoes, you don't have to click. Pick your feet up. Flip-flops annoy me. Mm. You know? But I'm happy, I'm just annoyed. You are just like, oh, the world's on me. It's rubbish, this. I know the world's great, it's just sometimes people annoy me by <laughs> being there, <laughs> you know. But, uh, <laughs> Steve said I should be locked in one of those towers that princesses used to be yeah, locked fairy in the fairy towers, so, cos everything annoys me. Um, but you, you are, you're grumpy. I'm not, I'm all right. Oh, right, okay, listen, we better play a record, um, soon, but, um, coming up, Steve, I went away with Carl. Okay. It was a little present from Jane, it was a golfing day, and I could take someone, took Carl. It was a brilliant day, absolutely, absolutely brilliant, but it ended with us sort of drinking and chatting and me saying, right, I'm going to bed. Because Carl said the most ridiculous thing he has ever said. Think of that. That's something. Oh. Sometimes, Carl, I think you're on another planet, he's the only one. Another Girl, Another Planet by The Only Ones. What a song. Amazing. One of my favourite intros ever. Um, Dr. Fox will disagree with me, his favourite ever was, uh, I think Money For Nothing, if I remember correctly. Interesting. Yeah. Great, another great tune. Yeah, another great, another great tune. I'm not knocking, I'm not yeah. knocking him. If uh, you'd like to let us know what your uh, favourite intro of all time. <laughs> 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 that number again is over. <laughs> uh, for, for. Uh. Right. Well, we got so much to, to get through well, with sorry, this show. let me just get this, my, I don't quite understand. You were given a gift. And the gift was a golfing, a golfing a day, day of golf. And, and, and uh, uh, yeah, for my Christmas present, part of my Christmas present from Jane, um, uh, a night away, um, two rooms, two rounds of golf, dinner for two, right? Oh. Uh, uh, but, but not with her, I noticed. Well, she doesn't play, no, she knew, no, it was a right. present, it was playing golf, it was, it was a sure. golf day. she doesn't play golf, so, um, I had to choose someone to, uh, sure. um, uh, take away. Um, it's alright, it wasn't a romantic meal. <laughs> no, no, but that was, <laughs> no, that was my immediate thought, I was... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, me and Carl, uh, just, uh, getting in there in the jacuzzi together. <laughs> it it would... just seems like an excuse for Jane to have a day off from you. <laughs> <laughs> but right. you don't play golf, Jane. I know, I know, go. <laughs> go, go, go. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> a bowling ball with yeah. my name on it. Um, so, <clears throat> I chose Carl Obviously, um, uh, we went. Well, it was a great day, wasn't it? Brilliant round of golf, absolutely brilliant. Such a beautiful place in Stoke Poges, it's like a really posh place. And does, uh, do, are you a good golf, uh, a good golf player? Uh, well, we'll get to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, uh, he bought, he, we, he bought the shoes especially for it. Oh, we could have, I'd love to see him in those little shoes. I know, and they were no good because they were metal spikes, we had to change them, he was annoyed straight away. He, he spent over £22 on his, <laughs> these golf shoes. <laughs> uh, we hired a buggy that was brilliant fun. Uh, I was bombing along, wasn't I? Mm. I don't drive, but I, I just, it was great on that buggy. Well, you've been on a buggy with me and you Terrifying. were a bit scared. Yeah. What, what, I nearly killed us once. I was just taking banks and things, but you don't see sort of bunkers, and he'd scream, go, stop! And he'd put his foot down on the brake, and then went, like, reverse. Well, at one point, he sort of did a handbrake turn next to the lake, and then we had, we had to reverse, right? And you know, you just flick a switch and put your foot down. He did that without looking. I looked behind, there's a big oak tree there. He screams, <laughs> watch the tree, right? He was, he's, he's, so. Jeeps of hazard. <laughs> I kept jumping in and uh, leaving him behind because I had to go to my ball. Because uh, sure. anyway, um, so uh, the first shot, the first shot, I got on my driver. I honestly did one of the best shots I've ever done. It went straight down. It was great. I thought, phew, got away with that because it's always the first one because it's a clubhouse and you yeah, want to look yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, he did up, man. And I've been saying, buy some balls. He just got six balls. I was going, what if you lose me? I want these six balls, right? He gets, he tees up, right? Whacks it. It goes miles, like, right angles, straight into these, uh, the, the woods, right? He turns around, he goes, go and buy some more balls. <laughs> so I'm laughing, because it's, like, impolite to laugh. But he, he, he broke the ice for me, and yeah. I was falling around. And then second shot, I go, you know you're off a three now. If you take another shot, he went, oh, right. So it's his third shot. He puts the ball down. <laughs> he hits the ground before it, and this is the ball off the 
And I was on my back, wasn't I? <laughs> Unbelievable. Actually rolling about on his back. <laughs> I was rolling about on my back. And th we were <laughs> terrible. I went round 107, he went round in like 119 or so much. Sure. We were, it was just <laughs> rubbish. How long but did it take? Five hours. Of course. And there was no one around, luckily. Yeah, um, yeah. But it was fantastic. So then we go and have a, um, uh, our meal. What oh, annoys me, I said, right, I'll go for a run, he went, I'll have a bath. I said, I'll see you at quarter to eight. At five to eight, I have to call him. He's not ready, so he's let me down there. Oh. We, I, I can't stay in lateness or laziness. You hate lateness. Or, yeah, and he's let me down. Do you know his excuse? He fell asleep in the bath because there was no light bulb. <laughs> There's no light bulb in the bathroom. So, so he instantly asleep. he fell asleep <laughs> and he was late. No, do you know what I mean though, Steve? If you're sort of like nice and warm and what have you. I was tired anyway, I've been stressed out <laughs> for four and a half hours, right? Uh, <laughs> right. My life flashed in front of me a few times in that buggy. <laughs> so it's all sort of wears you down a bit. I thought, right, I've got a headache. You're going for your run. I'm going to have a bath. I walk in, put the light on. For some reason it didn't come on, but I thought, it's all right. I'll just, uh, you know, doesn't matter. You can have a bath in the it's dark. It's summer, so it's light right. anyway. Well, so. there's no windows in the bathroom, so <laughs> yeah. So you were in the darkness. So I'm in the darkness. <laughs> I nod off because I'm shattered. <laughs> he calls up, asking me. So I said, "Well, I won't. Uh, you know, it doesn't normally take that long for me because you know I haven't got like long hair. I've got a dryer and sure. so I can sort of one wipe." <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's uh, already ten minutes late though when I called. Well, of ten minutes. Mm, ten wow, minutes. lateness is late. This oh, next it doesn't matter. Dinner mm. wasn't till quarter past, so mm. we had like another yeah. twenty minutes anyway. So mm. it doesn't really matter. Yeah, but we said quarter two. So he's calling up. Hurry up, hurry up. So I said, "Yeah, all right." So I get out. I'm drying like me tackle and what have you. <laughs> Calls back again 30 seconds film, later. You know. No, I don't, no? You know, you I don't, don't like that. Do that no. Give it a wipe. 30 seconds later, come on! So I end up going downstairs to the to the meal area. <laughs> Naked. With a wet shirt on and wet socks. <laughs> <laughs> I've got headache as it is. Meant to be a relaxing weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we have our meal, which is re really nice. Can't and then, we're, it. then we're sitting yeah. in the bar. I'm having a, I'm having a cigar by the fire. Yeah. Like we're having a, a rather nice uh, Pinot Grigio. Yeah. He's there going like an ink. Is this 1955 that <laughs> you live in? <laughs> <laughs> It's so right. And we, we are knackered because you know uh, he's not used to work. I've seen him moaning, falling asleep. He's sure. not used to it at all. And you've been on your feet for o for over half an hour. <laughs> yeah, right. So um, yeah, we didn't even walk around the golf <laughs> course. We had a buggy. Yeah. It wasn't even exercise. So we get onto conversations. He's talking about. He's, he's asking me stuff about evolution. What about e what's the, tell me that? Why? Why the giraffe? What, what's that rubbish about the giraffe getting a long neck? So well, it didn't. It didn't try and get a long neck. It it was selected. And he said, but. Why would evolution do that? I went, well, you think that evolution didn't do anything? There's not, there's not this consciousness, there's not this will that a giraffe has to stretch its neck to reach the leaves. One had a long enough neck to survive and pass it. In. He was going, yeah, but why did evolution? <laughs> now, this, this, this yeah. isn't. The, but by the way, this isn't the most stupid thing. This okay. is uh, this is warming up. This is about quarter to nine. Uh, right? sure. He said, why didn't evolution make a giraffe good at carpentry so it could build a ladder? Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. No. Right. Right. Okay. So he's thinking. He's thinking around it. He's trying to. He's trying to pick holes in evolution. Yeah. We get on. To, uh, I said. Well, things. Are, uh, I said. Uh, um, uh, we can see the speed of evolution in, um, in lower life forms like bacteria, viruses. They evolved. And that's why um, uh, soon we won't have an antibiotic that can kill some certain bacterial strains. And he said. And this is about um, half eleven. And I said, I'm going to bed. Right. He said, in the future. They reckon that you'll be able to wake up and eat a yogurt you can have a chat with. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Let's put a song on, right? No, and we'll come back to so it. So you're going to explain that? Yeah. You've got an explanation. Yeah. The Verve and Sonic on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. So let's just get this right, what did Carl say? He's just specifically he said, words He again. said, they reckon, and he, he, he uh, I said I'm going to bed, he went, no really, I said no, I'm going to bed Carl, there's no point now, cause you, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just like, you're talking gobbledygook, you know what I mean? I might as well talk for a pot plant. <laughs> yeah. He said, in the future, they reckon, I don't know who they are, <laughs> sure. I don't know, people who post things on the internet that he oh, reads, no, I think. Telegraph. Anyway, can, can complete the sentence. They reckon that in the future you'll be able to wake up. I love you. There's always a little scenario, an embellishment, like this little. 
Oh, hello, darling. Here's your yogurt. Hello. <laughs> uh, you'll be able to wake up and eat a yogurt you can have a chat with. All right, well, that, you know, thanks for that, Rick. I'm looking at you. I'm going to throw that over to Carl. <laughs> right, it's when I was away on holiday, right? I got, uh, I don't normally buy the Telegraph because it's too big and that, isn't it? So, but, uh, they were giving it away for free on the plane, so I thought- Ding dong. Might yeah. as well have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I saw a couple of things in it, I thought that would be interesting. I saw this thing about the future and it was talking about evolution and what have you, right, which I always find weird, because I always think that maybe we've sort of done it wrong anyway. Do you know what I mean? I sometimes think- You can't, you can't evo- it, 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 by definition, evolution can't get things wrong. Mm. Things change that it's not successful. It can't pass on its uh, genetic material, or uh, but it, it, if if you're around, you're, it's working. If you're around, it's working. Slugs are as evolved as they need to be. Slugs are as evolved as you. And well, me. that's true enough. No, yeah, yeah. No disrespect, but it works. It so, works. Sorry, around. But, but what's your point, Carl? No, I mean, I think we probably would have been better off staying as a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Just because, because there's more water than land, isn't there? Right. And you wouldn't drown. This is why I went to bed. No, I can imagine. I'm thinking of dozing off now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it went, it, do you know what I mean, from, well, what was it? it was bacteria, it was yeah. fish, mermaid, man, <laughs> onwards and what have you. So anyway. <laughs> oh, so God! Oh, oh God! No, there you know there are a few knowledge gaps in your theory of evolution. <laughs> oh, no, uh, you generally got it right, though. So yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, yeah, it, it went, it went bacteria, fish, mermaid, man. Um, <laughs> so what, <laughs> what next is the big question? <laughs> so, oh. so it was telling you all about this and what have you been saying now? Like, uh, we shouldn't have interfered because maybe if we wouldn't have invented planes and what have you, maybe we'd be able to fly and what have you. Sure, if we really yeah. needed to and stuff yeah, like that. Okay. So, we've, so we've interfered with with mm. evolution, you see. Right. But then it was saying, well, what's the future going Well, we, well, yes, in one way we have interfered with evolution, yeah. The, ev uh, the evolution of the human being in society is changing. It's not, it's no longer based on the strongest or the fittest because medical science can keep us alive long enough. Um, people can, uh, uh, pass on their genetic material where without this civilization they wouldn't have been able to. So, yeah, um, it's, it, 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 there are different parameters, uh, perim there are different pressures, there are different things that say whether we're going to pass on genetic material or not. Okay. So in that sense you're right. And that, but, Rick, as far as I'm aware, has led to a yoghurt that you can eat and have a conversation with. So <laughs> this, this is what it was saying, it was just saying, you know, we're living in mad times and that, you sure. know, there's a lot of weird stuff going on. One of and, which uh, is, go on. And, and the fellow was just saying, uh, you know, with computers and stuff like that the way it is, uh, we'll be able to wake up, go on, have a chat with your yoghurt and have something to eat. What do you mean, have a chat with your yoghurt? Because of the amount of, I mean, you have them yoghurts already, those friendly yoghurts. Those bacteria friendly ones, so this is just a, a really friendly one. Yeah, they didn't re <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! I'm my best! Do you know what, sometimes, Carl, I think that we're having a chat with the yogurt. Do you know what I mean? I don't, there, there can't be any difference. Uh, uh, yeah, but then I'm always reminded that would be more entertaining. <laughs> that would be more informative. God! Thanks yeah. again for letting me know about your, uh, Old Nobbo and, and Edge and yeah. all that. Now listen. You just got an email there saying, can you turn up, uh, your microphone, Steve? Apparently my voice is a little bit, uh, quiet. Carl has to do one thing, make sure we're heard. That's yep. all he has to do. Well, I can hear it. Sounds fine to me. Mm. Well, not to the, the listeners, and that's who we're trying to please. Well, yeah. it's one person, so they can't hear Yes, but we've only got one listener. <laughs> so if yeah. he's not happy, we're buggered. <laughs> You're allowed to say buggered. Um. Mm. Not twice, certainly. <laughs> no. <laughs> One's could have been a mistake. Yeah. Twice, pointing it out, is definitely, yeah, complaint material. Now, Carl. Carl. You haven't uh, told us about your holiday yet. You were meant to do it last week and you didn't. Uh, you started yes. telling us but we didn't have time because we had to do monkey news about a monkey who was a director who cared about lighting and stuff. Mm. Is there but, more monkey news this week? Uh, yep. is it as, uh, oh, okay. Is there... Uh, is it real monkey news? C did it happen, or is it mostly embellishment in your round little head? It's proper stuff. Yeah. Okay. Good. So holiday. Where did you go on holiday? Uh, Sardinia. Good. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Uh, nice food and that. It's important, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and uh, nice beaches and what have you. Excellent. Oh, it's like a nice long beach to walk down. Yeah. But uh, so we're having a nice walk, right? You know, uh, nudists do me adding. Sure. <laughs> right. Not uh, a problem though, is it? It's not like being scared of spiders where they might jump out under the chicken, uh, 
chicken sink, kitchen sink at you. You know what I mean? It's not a big problem being having your head done in by nudists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's just, it just annoys me. It sort of ruins the day a little bit. Cause it, it, it makes me feel uncomfortable. Right. Take your clothes off if you feel uncomfortable. It's much more relaxing. Yeah, but, well <laughs> anyway, right, so I'm walking along the beach. Right, lovely long beach, what have you, you know, watching the sea, picking up shells and that. And what are, your, what are you wearing? What's your natural beach club? When he says picking up shells, I imagine he's like on all fours going, <laughs> yeah. like that, you know what I mean, looking at things. <laughs> Just like washing his nuts in the sea to, to get, the, to get them tasty. Yeah, going into the sea and then kind of shaking himself and all the water flows off. <laughs> yeah. I've just got, you know, flip-flops on, pair of shorts Some and, yeah, uh, a, and like a, little, a little light shirt. Sure. Hmm. So anyway, walking along and, uh, Suzanne goes, oh look, right, and there's this woman, German I think, uh, coming out of the- How can you tell she was German? Under well, arm hair? I'll get to it. Okay. Forget the under arm hair. <laughs> <laughs> she came out, it looked like she was smuggling seaweed. <laughs> I'm going first! I'm right? going to first! Oh god! And, and the, f the funny thing is, right, <laughs> she uh- <laughs> She, uh, she was a bit hairy down there, was she? It, mental. <laughs> I felt bad because I hadn't had a shave for two days, right? Looked at her, just, it was ridiculous. She might as well have kept her trunks on. <laughs> it was just like she was wearing furry trunks, right? <gasps> so anyway, oh God. so I'm walking around. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, go on in. So Suzanne's like, oh look, and I'm like, oh, not again, you know, because every time we go away, there always seems to be one of these. Is she by herself, this woman? Well, the weird thing was, she was with her husband, right, oh, yeah. but he had shorts on, he yeah. was happy, right, yeah. but every time, like, because I walked past her and he sort of ran off, because he's, he's embarrassed, <laughs> do you know what I mean, there's nothing normal about it, How, what can he do, he can't go, all right, mate, because he knows it's, it's odd, right? How so old I'm, was he? Uh, sorry, how old was she? It's hard to tell when someone hasn't got clothes on, sure. you know what I mean? It's, they, they always look older, don't they, when, when they haven't got clothes on anyway, but I'd say she was about 40, 41. Okay. Right. So, um, so yeah, so I walked past and, and the annoying thing is, she, she got there on a bike, right, no clothes on, little pair of boots next to the bike. So if you can wear boots, just pop some shorts on, <laughs> you know what I mean? That takes more effort for me, putting boots on, but put the shorts on, right? right. So anyway, so the husband kept running off. I walked past and, and I, I'm getting annoyed because I'm saying, well, we've got to walk past them again on the way back. There's I know the way. fact they're scuttling away when Carl walks past. Like when you lift up a bit of um, sort of iron sheeting in the woods and loads of mice run away. Yeah. It's like whenever Carl goes, that nudists <laughs> run away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, okay. So, but no, so, so we sort of come walking back and what have you and, and you know, I have, a, have another look and what have you and he runs off again. Why are you having another look if it offends you so much? Oh, you might as well just just have a look, you know what I mean? It's just putting it on show and what have you. But yes. the interesting thing was that I just wondered whether the, the husband- cause If I, the husband were nude, you'd looked at his tackle, cause remember when you went to see those two strippers and it was a woman and man and they whipped their shorts off, you said you looked at his tackle first. Uh, I think any bloke would. Wow. You would. You just check it out, it's natural, isn't it? You just go, oh, all right. <laughs> well, it is normal or whatever. Cause you don't know if you, you know what I mean? You don't know if what you've got's right until you see someone else's. <laughs> No, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Go but on. anyway, so, um, but he got us talking because I was, then, as soon as I saw her, sort of, today's been ruined a bit, so I'm walking up the beach. <laughs> it's been ruined! Walking up the beach with Suzanne going, how does it happen? Do you know what I mean? Why do people do this? What's, what's, what fun are they getting out of it and what have you? And, um, I just was thinking, is there any chance that that fella, right, didn't even know that she was a nudist until they went away? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I said to Suzanne, if, if, say if I met Suzanne, it's like we're getting on, yeah, everything's fine. Yeah. And then you go off on holiday and you go, you haven't got much uh, luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, no, no, it's fine, this is plenty, and I'm thinking that's weird. And then we go down the beach and she whips her knickers off. <laughs> I'd, I'd be annoyed, but there's nothing I could do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Sure. So I'm just wondering whether that's what happened to this fella. Every time someone came walking up, he was like, oh, God, this is embarrassing. And yeah. he kept nipping off. Yeah. Finding something else to do. Look at some shells. <laughs> <laughs> so what, I'm what? wondering, Rick, if at some point, maybe today or in future shows, we should get a nudist, you know, one of those official nudist spokespeople, you know, because all these nudist organisations, get them on the phone, justify themselves to Carl, because, you know, in, in his mind, they are, what would you say, weirdos, freaks? I just don't, I don't, 
quite get it. I was reading something in one of the supplements last weekend, and some journalist went round to some, uh, whatever you call it, some resort or whatever and for, you just call for it, nudes sure. and that. And it's Were just they playing not, volleyball? Well, the only thing was, bowls. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that annoying? Well, don't play a sport where you got to bend over. <laughs> Neil Young from the album Zuma, and that's uh, Pardon My Heart on Beautiful. XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We just had a, a text here that says, and I don't know what the truth there is in this as ever, but John says there is apparently a nude bike ride today mm -hmm. in Hyde Park. Now, I can't believe that's the case because I don't think it's allowed, is it? You can't ride around with your, your veg, can you? I don't know. Why would you want to? Well, it's a good point. On a bike. <laughs> on a bike, I love the fact that that's what disgusts him. I, I, I want, do you know what, if we did appeal for a nudist to call in, I'd want a very specific sort, I don't want to, I want, I want a German nudist, a middle-aged man called Helmut. Okay. If there is any or the closest one to it. So, I want a middle-aged man from Germany, if your name is Helmut, you're in, but I'll accept, I'll accept Hans, um, Carl would be good, okay. isn't it? All right. Yeah. I think I'm. I'm wondering if the age might. Maybe we could. Could we? Could we broaden? Okay. That a just bit? a German. A German nudist bloke. Right. Could he at least be fat? <laughs> okay. Could I find a fat German fella? If your name's Helmer, we're going to give you a big prize. Yeah. But you know, any fat German fella who likes to get his sausage out. Sure. Okay. It's sauerkraut. Yeah. What's the phone number? Uh, oh eight seven one. Triple two one zero four nine. It'd be good just to get an email or a text over the contact, wouldn't it? And okay. then I can just call them up in the week. Sure. And uh, eighty three nine three six is the uh, text number. I think I, mean, I don't know what our um, our audience demographic pans out like, Rick, but I'm suspecting that's probably a fairly small fraction of our listenership. The, I uh, know, but you know, the there must be someone out there. If you know a fat German who likes to get his tackle out, of phones are going. Straight away, away, straight away. Just answer it, Carl. Just answer it. Just pop no, that. It could just... be anything. Well, it just no, see it what be, it is. To be fair, it could be a nutter. It could be a nutter. But it just say hello. Just if no, you tell it's nutter straight away. On, it'll stay there, won't we? It'll stay there. We'll answer it. Oh, answer leave it. it. Leave it. Answer it. Oh, you see this? It's gone. It's gone. There you go. He bottled it. So, just as well. Well, you took too long to answer it. There's a vicar in uh, <laughs> Australia who's who started sort of doing his services and all that. And nude. Hot in it there, out there. Yeah, well, you get the churches thing. aren't. Churches are pretty cold. <laughs> That's, uh, it was on, uh, on some website. Of course just, it was, yep. Just saying about a, a vicar and that who's, uh, there's a lot of nudists and that who want to get married. Do it, you know, you know, don't mess about with the wedding dress and that, just snip up. Jeez, well, 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 also, I suppose it's so, uh, I suppose if you believe in God, you believe that, uh, that's the way to be in it, because Adam and Eve in that. Yeah, but then in Adam and Eve, they, the shame made us uh, dress up, didn't it? Yeah. Eating the apple and things. Yeah, but God didn't want that, did he? No, he wanted to see it all. He was loving it. <laughs> he was unaware of some getting a life full of all of that, and then they, the snake, the snake said, cover yourself up. Stitched, stitched him right up. Yeah. So if you believe in God, which clearly I don't, do you believe in God, Carl? Uh, don't know, I don't really worry about it. It was ages ago, wasn't it? So, you know, if he's about, whatever. Whatever. Not that bothered. Adam and Eve is pretty interesting though, isn't it? It's not, well, how, how is it interesting? He made, he made, he made man made, uh, out of dust, then he, cause, just cause he could, he's having a laugh, um, then he made uh, her out of his, one of his ribs, again, he'd like to vary it a little bit, then they had two sons, uh, which gave rise to the entire human race. What was going on there then? What would have happened if they didn't get on? <laughs> That's interesting. Sometimes with pandas they don't fancy the other one, do they? They go, well that's my choice, one. You've brought me one panda from Lisbon Zoo and I've got to chag that. What if I don't fancy it? What if they bring in the right, a right slapper? Do you think What if it's the equivalent of like, um, uh, uh Love Island, whatever well, it's called. I it was like Celebrity Love Island. Yeah, and they're going, I am not shagging that slapper. Every, every panda in the world has seen that dirty old mott in magazines. Why am I meant to mate with it? I've got some dignity. Are you talking about Adam there or Panda? Was that um? Well, <laughs> I, I, I was fine, I suppose. <laughs> no, no, so, bad do you pandas. think that Adam had any say when God was making Eve? Was he saying, "Can make make the boobs a bit bigger"? Would you? And, uh, <laughs> I'm sort of I'm blonde. I'm into blondes, really. 
<laughs> did, I, mean, I don't know, did he have any input or was it just- I don't know. Well, I suppose it's- it was uh, one of his ribs, absolutely. I know, but well, he's probably restricted. You go, well, I'm, I'm working with a rib, Adam. <laughs> yeah. Give me a break, there's only so many things I can do. Well, he's probably- he's probably in kind of intensive care, wasn't he, with well, the whole- They go, well, I can't just keep making the boobs and things bigger, because their legs will get short. I go, I don't mind no, short legs. I don't mind no legs. I don't mind no legs. As long as the boobs are sizable. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I tell you what's weird though, Steve, right? Everyone's heard of, like, Adam and Eve, yeah? What's the surname? Yeah, where'd they get their post from? Unbelievable. Now listen, before you play the next tune, we should just, uh, we were trying to, trying to mop up some stuff from the last couple of shows which we haven't dealt with yet. One of which is an obsession of yours, because you're, we're on a radio station, Ricky and I come in, we bring in CDs, music we love, it means so much to us, we adore it. You don't really care about music, you, right. you work at a radio station, it's just, eh, you know, I don't no, care. I do, I do. No, I you do. don't. I do like a good track. I don't like everything that comes out and everyone raves about. Yeah, you thought the iPod wasn't worth it because you you, got, you named the five tracks you'd like. What was it? It was In the Ghetto, Babushka, Living in the City, what was the other one? Uh, Killing a Georgie, and there was one other one or something, and you just only like songs with a story. Yeah, but then there's a reason to listen to it, isn't there? Well, not only story once. Going on. No, because you might forget the ending. Listen to it again. Yeah, anyway, you might, we, yeah. You've been listening to Babushka quite a lot, is that right? Because you've, you've really got into your head now, you're trying to decipher well, the when story. Well, when I've been sort of asking for songs with stories, people have texted and emailed in and whatever, and I've had, I've had a couple, you know, last time we did the show. So I've gone, oh, right, that sounds interesting. Uh, and Babushka, when I was away on holiday, I listened to it a few times because I like the story. It's a good little story going on. You've got some thoughts on it though, have you? Uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll have a listen well, to it. Well, let's have a uh, listen to the track and then I know you've got some queries you'd like to raise. It's just about a, f a woman, in it, who, uh, I don't know, she's ugly or something, aged badly, and her husband gets bored with her. Have a listen, see what you think. Right. Next FM. <laughs> Listening to Magic 105.4. It was all the way back to 1979. Kate Bush, Babushka. <laughs> so, um, we yeah, would like your suggestions for songs which have stories in them, which um, may entertain Carl. They could shoot to the top of his list. What do you think of that, Carl? That has a, has a, a little story there. Uh, I like it, but. So she she tests her husband. Yeah, she writes him letters. She gets a letter back. It's a pseudonym. Babushka's her pseudonym. It's not a real name. Her real name is uh, uh, Molly Strank <laughs> from Ealing. Um, <laughs> and uh, Eva responds. She goes, "Oh, he's, he's, he's you know." So, uh, in real terms, he's he's having a bit of a an illicit affair behind her back because she doesn't know it's his wife. So she goes, "Oh, well, I'll take this a bit further. See how far I go." He turns up. She turns up, she, you know, he gets it on with her, and he's falling for her because uh, she's acting like she used to act, you know. It's, yeah, it's, but was yeah. he just playing along with it? Was he like a no? No, no, it's not, because they'd have said that in the song. They don't leave no, it up to Some people do that, like, don't they? Well, it wasn't. Kate okay, Bush would have said, and by the way, he's playing along. She'd have given us a clue. He's not. He's falling for it. <laughs> she went along incognito. He thought it was another woman. But how much work can you do to yourself to if say say if, like uh, <sighs> I I wrote a letter to Suzanne, yeah. right? Saying she uh, know it was you. It'd have egg stains on it. It'd be spelt wrong. No, but and you'd but, sign you know, it Carl crossed out uh, Babushka. I wrote to uh, I won't pick Babushka. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a ridiculous name. That wouldn't have worked anyway. You just get a vision in your head of I wouldn't have answered a letter from someone called Babushka. <laughs> 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 it's not the point. If Kate Bush is listening, please call in, because I'd love her to have a conversation <laughs> with you. I mean, that would be good. Forget Helmer. No, no, Helmer, you keep trying. A fat German. We want Kate Bush and a fat German. What I mean is, though. Now, wait a minute. What worries me is he didn't answer the last phone call. What if Kate Bush does for me? <laughs> Well, if anyone knows, Bush. if anyone knows Kate Bush, give her a call now. She's probably not listening. She's probably doing yoga or something, I imagine, or making a, a lentil soup, or, or maybe just like repotting some plants, right? But or practicing piano, right? But if anyone knows Kate Bush, she's got a number. Call her up now. Say, tune into XFM. There's a little bald mank fella wants to talk to you about Babushka, right? No, but but how much? But how much? Don't worry. You'll 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 get your. Chant. The how, phones are going. That much, could be Kate Bush. Be Bush. You yeah, that it's could, not, don't worry about it. It's that could Kate be Kate Bush. Oh, I know for a fact it isn't. Okay, okay. Oh, answer yeah. it. <laughs> Half Light by Athlete on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl. Right. Two o'clock. 
Let's get Rockbusters rolling. I should just, um, if people aren't familiar with Rockbusters, then, um, someone has actually sent in one of their own to test Carl. Um, they've used, I think, the same principle that Carl has, which is, you know, utterly random. Yeah. But as you said before, Tenuous, you're really just, just trying to really think of something yeah. that he might sure, be thinking of. Sure, sure. So, um, I'm gonna, I mean, she's done it quite coherently, but I'm wondering if I should sort of say it more as Carl might say it, you know, just slightly less. More different every time. Yeah, slightly less coherent. So, um, Carl, this is one for you, all right? Go on. You know, it's Sunday morning, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm in bed, but I don't sleep, you know, but like, Hollyoaks is on, the omnibus, I'm just watching that, you know. Um, I go and make a lovely cup of tea, you know, in the bed with Suzanne, aren't I, having a cup of tea? What's going on there? Just watching the telly and that, but hang on. I haven't got anything to dunk in me, uh, in my tea. I haven't got anything to dunk in my tea, have I? You know what I mean? I haven't got anything to dunk in there. I'm just having, you know. What, what am I doing? Is That's, it LB? It's LR. Oh. LR. So, have a think about that one, Carl. I, I think I know it. Yeah. Do you? Go for it. Go on. Is it Lionel Rich, Richie? It is Lionel sort Richie. Of, What's your logic? Sort of line in, line L, and it's like. No, no it, Rich. Tea. No, no rich tea. tea. Yeah. No biscuits, no rich tea. Lying, no rich tea. We, Lionel we, Rich tea. Lionel we, Richie. We, it works. It's, it's, it's just, it's just as coherent as one of yours. What's that? We've done one a little bit like it. There's nothing wrong with that. I cannot believe so you got that's it. A, that's a taste <laughs> it I cannot believe you got it. I might not have got it without the initials, but that's why we chucked them in, just to help you along. <laughs> 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 so, right, so what have you got for us right, this so week? We've got, we've got three of them. Oh, we've by the way, them. don't bother calling in Kate Bush because Carl doesn't want to answer the phones. He says Kate Bush is not going to call, so it's all going to be nutters. So we apologise. He's got one thing to do. He didn't even get the sound right because someone's complaining about they couldn't hear Steve. He's got to do monkey news, which is always twaddle, and he won't even answer the phones now. So I don't know. I don't know why he gets paid. He takes off Mondays because he works Saturdays. He I gets don't. paid for Saturdays. He takes five weeks not holiday a year. Not off Mondays. And, and, and he moans. Not off Mondays. Well. <laughs> Right, um, what, what have you got for us? Right then, the first one. Uh, there's a vehicle that sells kebabs. Right? <laughs> right? There, there's a vehicle that sells kebabs. Initial D. Right? D. <laughs> Great. Right? Have you worked that one out? Of course I haven't. Right, the second one. Um, you're asked if you want that bit of the egg. <laughs> you want that? You want? You want? You're asked if you, if you want that bit of the egg. Yeah. You think about it, but we t uh, sort of decide against it. <laughs> and what, again? What's going on there? You're asked if you want that bit of the egg. You think about it, but you go, nah, I'll go against it. Right? I've, I've got it. Is so it, is initials what? W, O, uh, Y, O? Yeah. Got it. Right, so. Okay. Yeah. That uh, one, that one works. Right. Uh, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No. Uh, and the last one. I don't think this burger will catch on. I don't think this burger will catch on. Yeah, and the letter there is M. So you just, uh, text or email in, uh, with the answers and, uh, win some stuff. What have yeah. we got? We've got some prizes. We've got, uh, another box set of the League of Gentlemen. This is uh, instant gratification, but uh, you go into a draw for some, something bigger. So what have we got today? Yeah, well today, this is what you're taking home today. Uh, oh. you've got the League of Gentlemen, the complete collection on DVD. That's yeah. not worth, that's worth having, definitely. Uh, we've got Catterick, which is the current Vic and Bob show on BBC Two, which is, uh, good. The Aviator, the, um, the award-winning, um, Leonardo DiCaprio, Martin Scorsese biopic. And once again, Ladder 49. We're giving that away now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently oh, got, um, can we get a job like those? We've we got loads of them. We've got Oh, yeah. excellent. So Email well. in if you just want a copy of Letter 49. I'm sure we could dig one out for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or phone in, because Carl does not answer the phones. Right. And remember, the winner goes forward f uh, into the chance to win the big prizes, the h signed Homer drawing, uh, the signed Nigel Tufnell poster, and you go to rickygervais.com and see Matt Groening actually drawing that to, uh, to, to verify it. Bit of Lloyd Carl won't oh, never wrote anyone, has it? Has it? Lloyd Cole, Impossible Girl, on XFM 104.9. Wow. Rick, I'm just reading an email we've had, and it is indeed true. Scores of naked cyclists will be wheeling around London today in a mass protest against oil dependency. The World Naked Bike Ride will see the arresting site of up to 200 daring riders bearing all in their cycle past some of the capital's most famous landmarks. Have they got to wear an helmet? <laughs> Are they against wearing an helmet? Well, I don't. I, I think they're trying to try to make a statement. I would imagine. I don't know. 
Well, they don't have to wear a helmet. It's not law to wear a helmet on a bike, is it? Obviously it's for your own safety. It's sensible. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's also sensible to just pop some pants on. <laughs> <laughs> just pop some pants on. Are you going to be, you gonna be that, popping down there and cheering them on? I'm not. I'm not going anywhere near it. What What are they going against? What's the problem that's going on? Um, oil dependency. I think you know. Generally, we're consuming too much oil, aren't we, in the world? And it's going to run out one day. And we've not talking, got any alternatives. Uh, talking of um, uh, campaigns and uh, things and that. Um, did you see? Uh, um, Sir Bob on um, Jonathan Ross last night. Sir Bob Geldof. Sir Bob Geldof. Yep. Uh, um, are you going to walk to uh, Edinburgh or sail to France, Carl? What, what do you think of all this? The G8? Uh, I think it's good that, you know, he's, uh, he's doing some stuff for the world and what have you, but I probably won't, won't bother. No. Having a walk. What do you make of all this, all this campaigning? You know, he's dedicated his life to this now, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I was watching him last night, and I uh, respect the man. I mean, he used to work here, didn't he? Did some shows and that. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's all right that he, that he can do it, but I assume that's not why you respect him. I assume you respect him because he's trying to save a nation, as opposed to he used to work in XFM for a while. Yeah, I know, but I'm just I'm just saying is uh, it's it's good that he's he's given up a lot of his time to you know try and save the world and that. But you know, there's a bit of me that's kind of like you know, is he wasting his time a bit? Oh, right. right. What, what do you mean, wasting his time? Well, he's he tried it before, and no, 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 wait, 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 wait. What he's trying to say is that the G8 are the, the uh, I think, the seven most uh, rich, wealthy nations in the world, and Russia, and they get together and they can they can wipe out the the third world debt. Mm. I.e., they they owe us billions and billions of pounds. They can't afford to pay it back. So he's going to say this: let's wipe the slate clean and pledge, I think, a lot more aid and stuff to them, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So what do you think of that? But. Won't, won't they just do it again? <laughs> right, what's you thinking? No, I just mean- I knew I, I, I knew I had a little diamond in the rough here. <laughs> I mean, obviously, yeah, I, I admit, I brought this up because I really wanted to know what, what Carl thought of it. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I had ulterior motives. It wasn't just for awareness for, for the, for the very worthy cause. It was because I know- look at him looking at me. Look at him, he looks at me like a cat. Honestly, it's like there's nothing behind those eyes. Right, what do you mean? They're, just, they gonna, they're just gonna run up the debt again, you think? Well, what I mean is, right, when I was a kid, right, and I wanted to go to the arcade, I'd borrow a quid off me mum, right, and she'd say, don't come back asking for more and what have you, but I'd, I'd have a go on a pinball machine or whatever, <clears throat> game on a fruity, and then go back, and she'd go, uh, go, can I have some more money? And she goes, we have you a quid before, and I go, I know, but I'm on holiday, and she goes, there you go then. And then I go off and do the same thing. I didn't go, no, I wasted the last one. I'm gonna pop this in the bank. Right. right. So, so you think that's what's gonna happen with? That's with, a, with that's with a the nice, nice metaphor. So what do you think happening there? That the Africans are uh, are Wait blowing it down the arcade <laughs> instead of putting it towards a fishing rod. They're blowing it down the arcade. <laughs> they're trying to. They are trying. I'm trying to win a watch. <laughs> Look, I've got a hundred goals. I think this thing is dodgy. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to win a fluffy toy. I just As Bob say, yeah, Bob's saying, you're never gonna get the Snoopy. You're never gonna it's, get the it's Snoopy. It's always gonna fall out of the little claw with really, me. It's really, the, the claw is not strong <laughs> enough. Yeah. Do not waste the- no, Oh, no, Midge. <laughs> Midge, 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 write a song. Write another song, mate. They've blown it down the arcade. <laughs> Brilliant. So no, that's your genuine logic, is it? Well, I just don't know, uh, I d if, if they put me in charge of it, I don't know what I'd do. I, I just think it's a- it's a- Could I just say that will never happen? No. Could I just say to London- Yeah. And anyone listening Sleep on Sleep easy. Sarah, yeah, don't worry. Carl is not going to be put in charge of G8. It's not going to be him, Blair. <laughs> Chirac. <laughs> that would be Brilliant. a joy if it were. That would be amazing. But anyway, so let's assume for what, in one, some alternate universe you are in charge. What would you do? Monkeys, obviously. It's like Planet of the Apes. <laughs> What's, uh, what, what are you, what are you going to do? You're, you're the only, you know, only person with opposable thumbs. <laughs> What's your solution? Uh, we've done a lot of it, haven't we? We've sent... Yeah. You know, money out there, we've sent them clothes and that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, have you? It's gone. You say we, have you sent- I've done, I've done loads for charity. Go on. No, loads, I've done, done loads of stuff. Go on. Oh, what? Oh, I'll give stuff to Oxfam. Yeah? Uh, what stuff you don't want anymore? Yeah, junk, you mean. Well, yeah, but it's, it'll be alright for them. I mean, I said to you the other day, like, when they collect clothes for over there, I don't know, none of my stuff's gonna fit them well. But what, but, but the thing is, I do loads of charities, I do loads of things like, uh, Go on. I pay, I pay for tools, you know, I do that thing, a monthly payment of a fiver, paying right. for, uh, you know, toolbox and that for someone out there. I help uh, old people, which I'm gonna stop, to be honest. Why? 
Cause, um, do you know this, do you know this thing I do, Steve, right? No. This is, this is a fiver a month as well, right? <laughs> got, got, I got stopped in Leicester Square one day. He said, uh, oh, there's a little old woman somewhere. She's cold, are you gonna help her out? <laughs> so I was like, oh, why me, right? <laughs> so anyway, so they said it's easier if people look after one old woman, right? So why me? I've signed up to look after this old woman called, I don't know, to call her name June or whatever, it doesn't matter. So <laughs> it does to her, but go on. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, so I'm paying this fiver a month, and the, and the first fiver, you know, uh, first time I paid it, I got this thing in the post, right? Mm. And it had, uh, you know, thanks a lot, Carl. Uh, you're looking after June. Here she is, you know, here's a little uh, picture of her, and she's sat there, what have you, with a cardigan on and stuff like that. Every five pound you pay, you know, it'll be cheering her up. And you know, look after her, pay for her food, and what have you. So for a bit, you feel good, don't you? And you think, well, I've done my bit for the world. Hmm. Anyway, two months later, get another package, right? Picture of June in there again. She's got a tan. <laughs> 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 so he's saying he's saying you're paying to keep her warm. No, they meant a week in Mallorca or whatever. And this is this is what I mean. People turn them if they can get away with it. That I is, don't know where to start. That isn't having a go though. I've what do you think, so what do you think? You think they're going? Don't don't bother, don't bother um, getting a job or anything. Get off of me, and then get off of me. It's June. Oh, I don't isn't know. It? I don't know. It's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult. So but you I'll... think Sir Bob should just wash his hands of the whole affair? You think it's a complete waste of time? Is that what you're saying? That oh. you should just leave him to it? Just leave him to it. Let him sink ever more into debt, ever more into hunger. You just think that should just carry, just think, carry on? Do you know what this? I think he's saying? I was thinking, I think, I think, now I'm not with words in your mouth, are you saying they blew the last lot we gave them, they've got to learn a lesson? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. Is that what you're thinking? No. What are you thinking? I'm not thinking anything like that. All, all I was thinking is about this gig, it might have been better to do it, like, rather than, I don't know, ruining a grass field in Edinburgh and that. Do it out in Africa, right? Get people out there, get the tourists up. Do you know what I mean? Get a load of people out there. Mm. They've got loads of- I don't of reckon he's gonna get people to walk to Edinburgh. I very much doubt no, no, people are gonna fly to Addis Ababa to see Coldplay. Cheap flights and what have you. Right. Hot dog stands and that, locals will love that, right? <laughs> Job done. Brilliant. Let's put him in charge. Yeah, just for one day. Let's put him in charge of live. Act. If Bob Galdoff is listening, I know, I know uh, you respect him because he used to work on XFM. No, but if Bob, Bob, if well. you're listening, please, I would love. Oh my God, a conversation. Bob Galdoff talking to. Forget Kate Bush. Forget that would be amazing. Can Bob please call in and speak to Carl? No one call except Bob, so we know it's Bob calling. Right, get on the phone. What's it's the phone number? What's the phone number? Can't we talk to him next week? He might be busy next week. No, He's he got won't. stuff to organise. He won't. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You can talk to us next week. All right. I'm not going to go. I'll go through the phones. It's mental. <laughs> right. Play a record. All right. What we're we having? Bit of uh, bit of killers. Yeah. The killers. Somebody told me on XFM 104.9. Tell you what. Talking of um, starving. I went to what is meant to be the best restaurant in the world on uh, oh yeah uh, Wednesday yeah sure um, you must be famished uh, well Jonathan uh, Ross uh, booked a table there it came out I think he's been trying to get there for a while and uh, um, I think there's a waiting list and everything right and uh, well, it's got to be you're walking straight in he can always walk straight in with that yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, uh, me and Jane went along with him and Jane to the Fat Duck in Bray uh, so it was voted the best restaurant in the world okay? right and um, it was incredible. I mean, it's across between a restaurant and sort of Barnum. They, yeah. you know, just incredible food. But all the way there, I'm thinking, well, I, I, I can't eat stuff in normal restaurants. Hmm. I can't eat, I don't eat red meat. I'm squeamish about things like seafood, uh, anything, anything that's a little, got too many legs or was, or was a crustacean once or it feeds on worms. I, I, it was, I knew that one of their um, signature dishes was snail porridge. So I'm thinking, I'm not going to be able to eat anything here. So I was thinking, uh, I had something to eat before I went. <laughs> and uh, I was thinking, they better not have mucked around the bread, right? Got there, beautiful. Um, and uh, it was, it was, it was really quite fantastic. And, and I let them know straight away, um, 
that I was a Philistine and they really accommodated me, you know, uh, 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 I didn't have the snail porridge, I, they, they put, um, mushrooms in my snail porridge, which was more of a risotto, and there's tasting menus and that, and it was, it was, um, uh, really fantastic. But, Jonathan halfway through, on the way there, I don't like travel well, on the way there, he actually phoned me and said, why are we taking you to this restaurant? Good point, very good point. Uh, uh, they know, even if I go around there, they cook me sausage and mash. Yeah. Or, do you know what I mean? Well, you are, you have the palate of one of those kids from the Jamie Oliver School Dinners <laughs> Program. <laughs> who's, he's got the lovely Jamie Oliver cooked, you know, kind of, uh, yeah. ratatouille, yeah. but they're going for the sort of chicken Twizzlers. Well, there's no chicken. I love chicken. I yeah. Like, I like, I, the chicken I can eat. I'm squeamish about red meat. There's nothing I've, uh, you know, it's a mixture of, it's not, uh, it's not morals. There's only one thing I don't eat morally, uh, that's veal. But the other thing else is just like, if it's got eyes and legs and things sticking out of it, or it's But it hasn't got eyes and legs and things sticking I out know, of it. What are you talking about? I, I mean, it just infuriates me. I actually got to a point now where I, I refuse to eat out with Ricky. Because I can't, it just sucks the life out of me. It actually makes me depressed. I can't enjoy the experience. If you go to an awards do, they bring out lovely gr uh, lovely food, you know, three courses, always and lamb. you're whinging. A you're always salmon, whinging. Which is hardly cooked, followed by lamb. Lo lovely bit of lamb. Who doesn't think lamb is the best of all the meats? Oh. And you no. just, you whinge, you complain, you look at Jane like a little boy who's like, oh no, why have you brought me here? <laughs> you are just, it was, oh. And I tell you, and I put it in the, you know, I don't, I don't want to, you know, badmouth people, but I suspect it's your family. I suspect it was your upbringing. I imagine, you know, I imagine that if I came to your house, you know, Late sixties, early seventies, came round to your place in Reading, it would have just been the smell of chip fat. Always just on. everywhere. Chip pervading fat just on. one of those chip fat fries that's just yeah, like you say, constantly, twenty four hours but a day. I used to eat things. I away. used to eat beef and pork and that and uh, it, it, I used to have to eventually when I was getting sort of squeamish and getting older, I'd make her burn it so much that it was just like chewing on a piece of leather <laughs> anyway. Where I couldn't I couldn't stand the, the sight of blood or something. A salad so, in your house would have been I'll a, tell you what, a, a salad onion and a packet of crisps. No, a salad in my house, right, was when it was summer, we were out in the garden, lovely salad, grated cheese, great Grated egg, two bits of beetroot with your leaves, um, <laughs> uh, a pickled onion, and a packet of crisps. <laughs> Uh, and that was, that was, uh, that was a salad. But- yeah. Now is uh, that, is that, do you agree that that is probably the reason why you've got this, 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 this palate? And I don't even, it's no, not even I've a palate, got, that's I've, too I've, nice I've, of words I've to I've got more it. squeamish as I've got older, because I say I, I used to, I used to eat beef but and pork and- what do you mean squeamish? I don't understand what you mean. Squeamish is fish, think it's about cooked. It, I can eat, I, I can eat like, you know, like, it has to be blasted, it has to be unrecognised to be an animal. You know what I mean? I, I mustn't see a bit of pink or a bit of fat. So if we if we were in biblical times, yeah. and you're there, <laughs> and Jesus Christ has just <laughs> fed forty thousand with some fishes and some loaves, you'd be going, I'm not into the fish, JC. I say you take the head off, cook, cook really cook, take the skin off. I, there's, I can see a bit of spine. And unless, that, unless that bread is mighty white, I'm not interested. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, what he hasn't said is, well, um, he gets frustrated because we have to go from restaurant to restaurant for something I can eat. But the reason we've only got about three restaurants to choose from are that because he doesn't want to spend more than a fiver at lunchtime. At lunchtime? Mm. If I was going out of an evening, you'd spend a decent amount of wallop. But lunchtime, would why you? would I spend? You'd be happy to spend twenty quid on lunch. Imagine that every single day. There's no one out there who's eating lunch twenty quid a day on lunch. It's crazy. You don't need that much food at lunchtime because we. I don't know what happens. You go in there, you have some kind of you know tiger in curry for lunch. You're asleep by one thirty. We're trying to work. We're trying to write TV shows, and you're dozing off like one of those giant anacondas that's just eating a sheep <laughs> and it's slowly digesting it. It takes like three weeks. He doesn't eat Carl, He does not like this. But he, he he'll go he'll walk a mile out of his way to get a sandwich. So I've been in an argument over that fifty p that time. <laughs> I don't want to bundle no, Here's the situation, Carl. Yeah. I lent you 50p and you decided you weren't going to pay me back. It should be to my discretion if I say, don't worry about it, Carl. You should offer me the 50p, go, there's that 50p I owe you, and I'll go, don't worry about it, Carl. But you didn't even do that. No, it's the way that you were, like. I said, where's my 50p? You went, oh, you don't need that. That's not your decision at all. I didn't say that. I said, I, I, I don't think I've got it at the moment or whatever. Rubbish. And he's going through my pockets and that. Rubbish. 50p. Ridiculous. You've just given him a keg of beer for free, haven't you? Well, let's, let's not go over it again. I, mean. I just I just think value for money is important. Like, now, okay, so for instance, in the morning, I have to get the tube, but you can get a, a, a travel card, zones one and two, right? It's about £4.70, I think. But before 9.30, it's about £6.50. All right, and then at 9.30, when the clock, literally on the clock ticks over to 9.30, it's £4.70, right? Now, sometimes I'll get there, it'll be about 20 past nine. Now you'd be saying to me, oh, just spend it, just spend it, and I'm thinking I've got ten minutes, I'll perhaps read the paper, wait for it to click over to 9.30 and then I can get a cheaper ticket. Now surely that makes sense. Surely that's logic. 
Mm. Don't, I mean, if you were in that situation, Rick, if you were there, right, and you had, let's say you had three minutes to wait mm. before 9.30, what would you do? Would you stand there and wait? No, because waiting to me is worse than uh, It's madness. It's madness. I can't stand queuing, I can't stand, no, I, I, I'd pay, yeah. How long would it have to be before you'd wait? I, I, I if mean, there was like a minute on the clock to go, would you wait? Uh, if they literally said, if you wait 30 seconds, it's I, I go, um, all right. Well, that is the case. That literally yeah, is the case. okay. But not 10 minutes, no. What not about you, Carl? Uh, I feel fl- I, if it was 30 seconds, I'd feel flash going, I'd spend three pounds. But if it was like a couple of minutes, I'd go, oh, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I, I just, I just wouldn't. Madness. Yeah. Think about how that tots up over the years. Amazing. Carl, what about you, Carl? Would you do it? It, it depends, doesn't it, what your job is and that. If you're a doctor, you've got to get to, you know, go and save someone or whatever, you can't say, oh, just give it ten minutes. Depends. Depends on the situation, depends. Most of the time I've got to get in work early, I can't be hanging around till but half But you night. don't know, do you? I've, so, I've, you know, I've, I've got called stuff him when I was, uh, uh, so was out. He, uh, I've seen him do one day, yeah. right? I've seen him for one whole day, he went away, he fell asleep at, um, quarter to eight yeah. in the bath because he was knackered. So, yeah. you know, he has five weeks holiday yeah. a year, oh, he's taking the piss. <laughs> Feeder, pushing the senses. Quite a food related sort of uh, show, isn't it? It is. Feeder, yeah, thinking of gluttony, did you see in, uh, I think it was Heat magazine, huh? um, it was former pop idol winner Michelle McManus. Oh, yeah. She's lost considerable, she's lost a lot of weight. Oh, yeah. And, she's lost um, five stone, hasn't she? Please see that the headline was, um, I used to eat, uh, 12 packets of Doritos a night. At she's night. 12 packets of Doritos. I just like the idea that you've got to 11 packets and you're thinking, one it's more a, do it. It's a bit peckish. One more do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's Unbelievable. Not... <laughs> but someone sent in a couple of uh, odds and ends news stories, you know, they've gleaned off the web. And apparently, uh, Britain's fattest family have shared 23 stone. Um, they, what, uh, none of them died? Between the five of them, oh, come on. Between the five of them, the Phillips family from Worcester weighed more than 100 stone. Jesus. Well, how many are there, though? They spent five of them, and they spent 300 pounds a week on food. Um, a, an evening meal consisted of an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet and another ice cream stop at McDonald's. Um, the mum, she was generally happy, like Carl is, but she said she used to get upset when she couldn't, um, buy clothes for her kids because the shops didn't stock anything above XXXXXL. Um, but, uh, <laughs> it says here that, it says Mitchell, 13, was the heaviest of the three, weighing 27 stone. By the age of four, he was Britain's fattest toddler, weighing 10 stone. Is that competition <laughs> still going? He, bro <laughs> he <sighs> broke five bikes. He broke five bikes by, uh, buckling the wheels. Oh, that's I know you're always kind of fat kids, Carl. Chasing an ice cream van. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the bike just fell apart. Yeah. Wow. Maybe, maybe now he's on that new dirt uh, bike ride, you know, because he's lost some weight. Oh, that would be painful, that'll, wouldn't that'll it? That would be If one of them buckles. Yeah. Well, I've got, uh, another food-related, uh, item here. Now, Carl, I got a little email via, um, my agent, sent from someone here, okay, sent from someone at, um, XFM, okay, and, uh, I won't say it was, she just said, uh, I thought, um, this might be, uh, good for Ricky to use on Saturday, and obviously what happened is, Suzanne has sent you an email in the week, it was Wednesday, and you've returned it, but I think you've returned it to the wrong email address, you returned it to someone here, who of course immediately forwarded it to my agent for ridicule on the show, don't panic, it's nothing that bad, okay. It's uh, an email from Suzanne talking about your tea that night. Was Suzanne out on Wednesday night? Was the uh, an England game or something? Yeah. So you you were alone. You were home alone where you went tonight. Yeah. Did you enjoy your meal? Was it was it a quiche? Go on. Right. From Suzanne to Carl. Take the quiche and put it on the baking tray. Cook for 30 minutes on 190. Take lettuce and put on plate. Take three tomatoes, wash and chop into quarters. Place on lettuce. Take an avocado, chop in half, remove the stone, <laughs> peel skin and slice. Place on salad. Put salt and pepper on and a dribble of olive and balsamic vinegar dressing. Right? In brackets, small bottle behind the cafetiere. <laughs> Right, in case he's reaching for bleach. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's it. She had to throw everything else away. Right? Then sprinkle a smidge of parmesan on top. Remove keys from oven, cut into quarters, and put on plate. <laughs> Eat. Oh, wow. <laughs> Does she have to do that every single time? She's like... No, it's just that she, I'm not that good at cooking, right? Um, 
and to be honest, that- that was a lot of hard work. I didn't bother warming it up. <laughs> and I did without the avocado. <laughs> Why? Why? Too much messing about. <laughs> he didn't even do that! With instructions it was too much! But, um, oh. yeah, I'm not that- I'm not that good at cooking and Did that, you genuinely- um, that's not cooking though, is it, Carl? That's- That's, that's heating up a quiche. That's co cooking it is making the quiche. Yeah, but I'm- I'm just- kind so of, Do you- of, like, could you have figured that out uh, she <laughs> left that note for you? Why did she have to tell you what the olive oil and um, balsamic vinegar was? Because I've, I've- I've put sort of cooking oil on my food once and I said, oh, it's a bit- <laughs> It's ever since, I'm right, gonna year, die. Uh, years ago- I'm gonna die! Years ago- oh, God, it, like leaving Mr. Magoo at home! It was, just... it was ever since I put sausages in the toaster. <laughs> that, uh, oh, God, what I do you mean? I nearly set what the do you mean? Cause, do you know like when you're grilling food in a pan and all that? Yeah. Sort of sausages spit and it goes everywhere, doesn't it? And it makes everywhere <laughs> greasy. <laughs> so I thought, well, <laughs> just want to warm them up. Yeah. Pong them in the toaster. Yeah. What happened? And she sort of caught- well, They got stuck and they sort of caught on fire, I she, imagine. She, well, she came in just as I was sort of plunging it and what have you came in from work. Said, what are you doing? What are you- I said, no, I'm in sausages. <laughs> well, the oven isn't on. I know, they're in here. <laughs> what, you turn it off? Uh, panicking and that. But, <laughs> I've, I've never been into it. I've never been into cooking oh, and that at school and stuff. Oh I didn't bother God. doing it. Oh God! Oh, every time Suzanne comes home, she must think, "Please be the house still there. Yeah. Please, let the, please not let me hear a fire engine as I come round this corner." Oh God! She comes. And goes, oh God! Thank God! I bet she's always happy to see you when she gets home, and you haven't burned the place down or introduced some howler monkeys or something. Unbelievable. But I, what I find extraordinary is there are people who are in sort of care in the community who don't need instructions. No. On how to prepare food. Oh, they do. They, they, they can do it. Yeah, you show them once. Yeah, they're, 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 whatever you do, don't put sausages in the toaster, Johnny. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they, and they, they learn it. They don't put sausages in the toaster. Yeah. What they, they put their fingers in. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, are we doing uh, Rockbusters on Saturday? Oh, yeah, let's oh, play a song. The, we'll it's play, what we'll, London's we'll, waiting I'll for. I'll tell you what, we'll play a song and do. do Why not? It's yeah. worth waiting Plus, for. Have we still got Monkey News to come? Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh. Roxy Music with the, uh, the old Dylan classic Hard Rains on XFM 104.9. Mixing it up, just mixing it up, oh, mixing yeah, and matching. We've got, yeah, we, um, we've got a bit of uh, Roxy Music, we don't care, do we? But they'll right bang up to date with some of the latest tracks from Feeder and the like, so. Yeah, 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 yeah big time. <laughs> but, uh, it's what they're waiting for, it's the Rockbuster dancers. That's right. Uh, Alright. Okay, give us the clue, give us the answer. Right then, uh, first one. Oh, yeah, because we haven't got long for monkey news. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. First one. <laughs> There's a there's a vehicle over there that's uh, it's changed selling kebabs. Oh, it's changed. Go on. <clears throat> Initial D. Yeah, what is it? That was Donovan. Donovan. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That Good. Worked. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah. Second that's a one. real clue. Mm. Well, they got it like they always do. So they're yeah. always real clues. Mm. Uh, second one. You're asked if you want that bit of the egg, right? You think about it, then you decide against it. I think I know this one. What was the initial again? Y O. Um, is this um, uh, uh, John Lennon's um, wife, Yoke Ono? Yeah, that's right. I think that was her name, Yoke Ono, was it? <laughs> yeah, it was Yoke Ono. That, that was, was Yoke Yo Ono. No, no, no. Oh, You've got no. it wrong. You're thinking about it. You asked if you want a bit of the egg. Yeah. You go, Yoke. You think about it. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, so you say it twice, you stutter. So no, it's no, Yoke, no, no. Yoke, oh, oh no. No, you, you no her name's Yoko, oh no, though. Yeah, Yoko, yeah. oh no. Listen to the clue again. Okay, no, 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 So what you say is, do you, do you want this bit of the egg? You think, oh, what, the other bit? No. Yoke, oh, oh no. Yoke, right. oh, oh no. Yoke, oh, oh no. Yoke, oh, oh no. Yoke, oh, no, no. Oh, Yoke. Yeah, go on, brilliant. Yeah, okay, yeah, Yoke, oh no, yeah, go on, yeah. Yeah, next, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And the last one was, uh. I don't think this burger will catch on. That was, uh, initial M. Yeah. McFly. Right? So, there's your three clues. Which, which one else It won't catch on. Well, who'd want to eat that? You know what I mean? It's like a, a Mac burger or whatever. Mac, Mac chicken. McFly. <laughs> don't want one. Put it back. I'll have a chicken. <laughs> right? So who's, who's got the, oh. who's got the three then? Well, well done to, uh, Ian Shillam. <laughs> Well, Mansfield, who's uh, got all those answers right, amazingly. Uh, and he go, he wins all those great prizes, including uh, Ladder 49, starring Joaquin Phoenix mm. and John Travolta, which I don't think anyone's ever no, seen. There's 49 <laughs> of them. So. And, um, 
<laughs> and he wins that, but he also goes forward, as you say, to the big draw, which will come up at the uh, end of the uh, uh, run. It's win the signed uh, Homer saying, I like Carl because he's stupid like me, and you can see Matt Groening drawing that, to know it's real on uh, rickyjaways.com, and you can win that, and a signed Nigel Tufnell poster. Brilliant. <laughs> Ricky and Steve Classic on XFM Sugar, if I can't change your mind. Brilliant. Uh, so listen, it's time, isn't it? We've only got a few minutes left, so you better play the jingle. Oh, oh chimpanzee that! Monkey news. <laughs> so monkey news, if you've uh, only just started listening to the show. <laughs> oh, you poor fool. Um, monkey news is where Carl um, reports for us all the latest monkey activity. A headline or a word or someone, someone, someone that he overheard in a pub and then totally embellishes it and makes it ridiculous and impossible. <laughs> he believes it though. He believes every word he's saying. Let me say that before you hear, when you hear this, whatever it is, I haven't heard it, twaddle, um, remember, Carl totally believes it. Go on. Right, so anyway, right, I think it's in, uh, in LA this happened. Right. I think. Why, why does he think? Uh, so these people are in a, in a restaurant having a lovely meal. <laughs> is one of them short and hairy but it goes, <laughs> totally covers from top to bottom in a space suit so he didn't know it was a monkey? It's so, not one of the customers, one of the waiters? So, th so they're having a, having a lovely dinner, probably one of the best sort of dinners they've, they've had, right? Yeah. So the waiter comes over and it's like, you know, can we just say that I had a lovely meal and that? Right, it's the chef. Of <laughs> course it is. So, can we see uh, the chef? Yeah. So, so <laughs> can, can we just, you know, see, see the guy who cooked it? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Short feather, hairy? So, the waiter, the, said, to be honest, the, waiter, much. the waiter said, look, he's busy, you know, he's got meals to cook and what have you. He hadn't really got time. He said, it only took a minute. He said, no, I prefer, you know. So this is a restaurant in LA that I'll, serves brilliant food. I'll pass, I'll pass your message on and what have you, right? So, um. So he sends for, so, uh, monkey Pierre White. So it's a bit odd, anyway. <laughs> So, so they go, so they go out, right? They go, uh, they go out to the car and they notice the, uh, the kitchen door's open. Yeah. yeah, of course they do, because they're, they're going to discover something that I don't know. So they they're just... Hold on, this, um, just, just out of interest, this, uh, the, where did this, um, chef train before, before we see him or reveal, you know, what he might look like or mm. like to eat, yeah, um, uh, um, well, So anyway, so, uh, so they pop their head in and think, we'll just, we'll just nip in and go, yeah, you know, not. love, love, love fruit salad or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they stick their head See the on. human, we better see the human chef. Yeah. <laughs> you never guess what. Go on. Monkey stood on a chair, right, cooking veg. <laughs> Right, so anyway, so they're like, what's going on here? <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? Questions. What do you mean he's cooking veg? What is he doing with it? Well, he's, he's stood on a chair by the, by the cooker and he's, yeah. uh, chopping, stu chopping stuff. Oh, he's, up, he's chopping it. as well now, he's just managing it, yeah. It's got a little, uh, you know, he's it, it, got the, the bosses in there, they're, they're like a bit shocked. So he's a bit panicking because he's got this monkey working for him. So they say to him, what's going on here? We didn't know this, this is what's going on, you know, what you, what, why have you got a monkey cooking stuff? So he said, well, they it's certainly a monkey, I should point out, who probably doesn't need instructions from its girlfriend. <laughs> uh, forget it. <laughs> <laughs>